This podcast is brought to you by our Anime Addicts community. If you want to support the podcast, help out the show, and get all of our exclusive extra content, that's our hentai episodes, our hobby addicts episodes, and our after parties. You can go to aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon. Hey, last week on our hentai episode, we got a full hour firsthand account of what it's like to go to a soap land, some straight up OG Howard Stern shit. So if you want to get that content and so much more, again, that's aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon. And now it's time to start the show. Get ready! You are about to listen to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Make your anime addiction worse at aaapodcast.com. And now, here are your anime addicts. Welcome in to the 737th episode of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast, where our sole mission is to make your anime addiction worse. For those of you watching live on twitch.tv slash AAA podcast, thanks so much for tuning in. And for those of you at home, wherever you're listening from, thanks for making us a part of your day. Those of you on Twitch have noticed that there's a lot of extra people on the feed today, some new faces, some old faces. And I'm going to introduce them one at a time. But first, follow us on Twitter. We're on pretty much all the social media, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. We're trying to get the TikTok more ramped up here and might start recording our videos live on TikTok as well as Twitch. But we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Again, of course, if you want to join the Discord, it's aadiscord.com, which is uh, pretty much where most activity happens surrounding the podcast. So if you're on there, you will be able to uh, join the crew and talk to us and talk to the other fans. It's a good place to be. And, of course, if you want to buy a shirt or a hoodie or anything, it's aaashop.info. Caroline's put quite a bit of work into that store, and so is Mason designing things and just getting it running. So big credit there. So, wow, a lot of people to introduce. Of course, I am your host, Mitsugi, and I'm joined by, first, the only regular host other than myself. We have Mason. How are you, Boring. Mason? No boring. one cares. Moving on. So boring. Poor Mason. No one appreciates That's, him. It's okay. It's okay. All right, and we're also joined by Frigimon Fanatic Andrew. How are you, buddy? Who is back to host hello, yet hello. another game for us? How's it going? I'm doing great. How's everybody? I'm doing just just fine. Done. You're wearing a sweatshirt in this weather. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that's because I'm in air conditioning. He's in Canada. Uh, oh. where, it, where it never. <laughs> no, gets I'm just hot. in air conditioning. We are, we're also joined yeah. by Wormy, who was with us last week for a hentai episode, a very good one. So, Wormy, how are you doing? Glad to be here. Glad to talk about the city that is wicked. It's going to be a great time. And for the first time in probably like eight or nine years, Gerald from Anime World Order, I'm talking to you for the first time in such a long time, and I'm actually going to take a drink of whiskey for you (laughs) because you're a really good guy, and I appreciate you being on today. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, Yeah, it's been a long time since we last chatted, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this. I... uh, I feel like, uh, you know, having me on for something that is almost hentai seems kind of appropriate. We'll talk about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, do you have anything you want to promote while you're here? I mean, you may as well. So if you want to. Well, let's see. I'm on the Anime World Order podcast. We've been around since 2005. We were insane. we are the longest running anime only podcast on the Internet. Um uh, I also write for Otaku USA. I write for Anime News Network once in a while. I have got a oh, uh, I've got a new initiative that I'm working on: the Otaku Archive, where we are working on cataloging and archiving anime fandoms past. We have got a lot of really interesting um, newsletters and stuff from anime fandom in the 80s and 90s. So check us out wow. on archive.org. Um, there's some crazy stuff there anime fandom has really not changed uh and i've also got a panel coming up at otakon in three weeks so uh that is all on the history of anime and non-anime so if you watch the macy's thanksgiving day parade and see the giant goku float 
this is this panel's about how we got there. Are they are they still anime doing... and non anime just sounds like everything. Well, well now true. it does. <laughs> that's the thing is now it does. But it's how how we got to this point. So you know how stuff in the seven how how like there were like anime references in in Wonder Woman from that the seventies show Wonder Woman and such. So things so like hey, that. Are, are are they still doing Otakon in Washington or do they move it again? Uh, it's still in Washington. Um, right, so, not so, hasn't moved back to Baltimore or anything. It is still blazingly hot there. It's oh, going man. to be people are going to be passing out constantly. I'm sure. Well, Otakon is probably my favorite anime convention. And if any of you guys listening have a chance to go to Otakon, it is usually a pretty roaring time. So I would definitely check out Gerald at Otakon if you guys are, have a chance to attend. So, but I'm just glad to see you, Gerald. So I'm glad you're doing well, and uh, thanks for being on with us. So good to see everybody. It's I. Uh, uh, as you can see, I do not have the streamer set up. I do not have like a whole like be, like stuff of just stuff that I have <laughs> behind me. Um, the best I can do is I've got you know a couple of things on top of my oh, there uh, we on, yeah, just a couple of figures here, and then uh, maybe you can see it there. A comfy couch. Desk. Well, no, uh, there we go. My wall of anime, very oh, blurry. Can't see anything. So. So that it's doesn't work because it's that inappropriate. <laughs> it's, it's that all, disgusting. It's all just, just a wall of just filth. I didn't yes. know they made that much hentai. <laughs> I know. I'm, uh, I'm asking Wait, if it's yes, custom made. Did. Oh my goodness. You're <laughs> in the same Japan. location as Wormy. How, what are the, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, well, thanks for being here. We have a pretty wild episode today. I, I, uh, it's going to be chaotic. I hope it goes well. We'll see We're I always play it by ear, but we've been playing it by ear since 2009. So, um, Andrew is here to be the host yet again of Anime Around the Horn, so we're going to be doing that later on, and it's it's always been a hit, I think. He's not he doesn't have his bow tie, you know, but you know we forgive him. It's a Nintendo hoodie. I mean, you look good anyway. You know what I I'm look, saying? Yeah, I mean, you still I look good in whatever I wear, so I'm not worried about that. And who knows? There might just be a surprise in the near future for everybody. But oh, I'm not telling. Oh, oh wow, you're going to take that off, and you're going to have like your your announcer suit on with your tie underneath. I was going to say, it's not a hentai episode, man. It's just chill, but okay, okay. check those well, out. We'll find out in a minute because we're going to be reviewing Wicked City today, which was um, recommended and actually requested by one of our by one of our patrons on per- on Patreon, Lonnie. So thank you so much for, for, for supporting the podcast. And this, this review is for you. And I think we'll, later on we'll get to Wicked City, but I think the question will probably be, is, is Wicked City a hentai? Because I swear to you it is. I don't know what else to say. That anime has so much sex in it. We'll get to it. Um, all right. Well, hey, you know, this this week we said we were going to try to find the, the Jujutsu Kaisen uh, dipping sauces. I We did our best to find it, and we all have a story about how hard it is to find these damn dipping sauces. So I'm holding I'm holding mine up right here. So I got uh, whatever the hell this character's name is. Okay, we've all got it. Yep. Yep. I'm Mormy's got Gojo. Gojo sauce oh, in my yeah. mouth. And Mets and I both got Itadori. Yeah, we got Itadori and... Um, Gerald lives in or it lives in Central Florida where they don't have McNuggets. That's very sad. <laughs> Everything is sold out. Uh, yeah. We, uh, I think, my friend went to like five different McDonald's. All of them were sold out. So uh, it, is, it has been cleaned out here. And Andrew's in Canada, so we all know how that goes. I'm so sorry, Andrew. I'm Canadian, so we still love no you. dice. So, so I here's my so. story. I went to a. Uh, I went to a McDonald's because they supposedly had the sauces. I paid for it on the app. I went there. I was all excited. I get through the window, and he goes, oh, we don't have the sauces. And I and he goes, do you want a refund? And I said, shit, yeah, I want a fucking refund. You don't have the damn product. So he gave me a refund. I go down the street to another one, walk in, talk to the lady. She has no idea what I'm talking about. And, the, and, the la- and then the manager comes, and she goes, oh, yeah, we don't have any of those. But the other day, I had McNuggets, and I think I have a bunch of them, a bunch of them in my car. So she goes out to her car and she's rummaging through her car trying to find these fucking little containers of, of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen sauce. And she comes back and she's got like four of them. And, I'm, and they're hot as hell. Like they've been sitting in the bottom of her car just like baking in the heat. And mm, that's uh, how they get that smoky flavor. I was like, she didn't even charge me. I was just like, you're so nice. Like, thank you for just giving this to me. Um, so, and I, but I ate all the nuggets already. I don't have any nuggets. I'm just going to drink the sauce. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, that's it's, oh my goodness. M- m- listen, Ma- Maki was drinking sauce in Wicked City. I can drink. I can drink Itadori sauce. You know, here we go. So, um, anybody else have a fun story about how you had to get these friggin' sauces? Um, well, there's no McDonald's within 15 minutes of me that has the sauces. I checked on the app, and none of them have it. So the closest one was 25 minutes away. But Jesus. I didn't want to risk going that far on podcast day. So yesterday, I drive out 25 minutes and get a six piece of nuggies to get the sauce with it. And I was conflicted because on one hand, I think it's like a crime against the Geneva Convention to have the McDonald's app and pay the money. Like I didn't want to do that because I'm, you know me, I can't stand even going to McDonald's. This is my first time going there in years. (laughs) But on the other hand, if my voice cracked when I'm ordering a Jujutsu Kaisen sauce in the drive-thru, I think I would drive away in shame. So luckily they had the kiosk there where you just order inside the restaurant without making any human contact. So I got the sauce yesterday, and then today I went back out to get fresh nuggies. So I also ordered what was going to be the most popular sauce because I want to know Buffalo. how the garlic sauce compares to the whatever the popular one is. Because really, McDonald's nuggets have the taste of like wet cardboard. Like there's no flavor to them. It's all in the sauce. Oh. So really... I Damn. need to see if it's if this is a better sauce. So, and I was going to ask the guy, what's the best sauce? And before I even asked, when I ordered chicken nuggets, he said barbecue. So I'm assuming that's what it is. So I'm going to have one barbecue, one jujitsu garlic, whatever, and compare. Special so, grade, okay? Special, special grade. grade. So what do I have first? Garlic or barbecue? Well, I'm just going to try. say this is a... Very Mason story, by this the is way. Very Trying scientific. to avoid as much human contact as possible. I'm just going to try this just right now. Say. I'm going to try it okay. right now and give my thoughts. I'll try it right now, too. I'm sorry, audio listeners. Uh, someone else tell a funny story so you don't have to listen to me like uh, slop. I'm Canadian. Much. Is that funny enough? See, I think um, this no. is pretty funny. So I tried the sauce yesterday um, when I had my when I had McNuggets, and I, and, I gotta say, and I just drank it out of the container just for the listeners. I gotta say, I think the sauce is good. I mean, the ingredients are trash. It's made out of water and like corn syrup, and the, and soy sauce basically. Um, but it tastes like something that they would that they would marinate chicken in at a Chinese restaurant. So it's somewhere between like General Tso's chicken and teriyaki chicken. And I actually think it's pretty good. I don't know if it's like you know worth being sold out everywhere on the fucking planet. I think that more speaks to the popularity of, of Jujutsu Kaisen than the friggin' sauce, but. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. It's not as good as buffalo. I'd rather have buffalo sauce for sure, but um, I think it's pretty solid. What do you think, Mason? Do you feel bad now? I think it's eating? fine. It's got a little bit of a tang that is almost too artificial. Like, you know that the spiciness isn't coming from peppers or anything like that. It's coming from the liquid gloop that they pull out of the sewer, but it's it's fine. I don't know if it's worth coming with the like a month long subscription to Crunchyroll, which is kind of cool in concept, but now you can't leave a comment. So big sad. Um, it's fine. It's if you didn't get it, you're not missing out on the greatest sauce ever. No, but I think but it it's is kind of it's, a nice little garlic tang it's that pretty. it's worth going for. Yeah. Wormy, what do you think? So Mason said earlier that if you don't use sauce, you're not eating the nuggets, right? I don't use sauce on anything ever. Like they're nuggets. They're like, if it comes with, I don't get and- uh, if it comes with it, I'll eat it with it, but I never put it on there myself. So when I eat nuggets, I never use sauce, even like homemade nuggets and chicken and stuff. I just eat it how it is, plain. Well, this ideally, sauce, you season it properly so it doesn't around, eat guess. it. Yeah. But as someone who had the mainline six sauceless nuggets yesterday, because I couldn't have the sauce yesterday, but I wasn't going to not eat the chicken, it needed the sauce. I mean, yeah, I those say, nuggets are mostly corn, so... yeah, It's... Yeah, chicken what nuggets is, is quotes around everything in that sense. Everything is corn. There's fucking corn in the sauce. It's my the favorite second ingredient sauce is corn. There, so. We must grow a lot of fucking corn in the United States, honestly. That's you do. Yeah, that's, we that's what we do best. I will say uh, Are we done with this? <laughs> yeah, we're we're done. I, I will say I Good do job. I do enjoy a uh, a burger during like UFC when they're having that, but other than that, I do try to stay off the McDonald's, but yeah. I, I thought the sauce was pretty good. Good luck finding it, guys, and if you get it, make sure you get your special uh, you know, subscription to Crunchyroll. All right, let's do, let's do the big news of the week. Oh, it's time for big 
drink news of the week. I'm already out of whiskey. I don't know what that means. It's not good. Um, Kadokawa fortifies its anime production with with the acquisition of Doga Kobo, which is definitely more substantial than what we talked about last time when this happened, which I think was Studio 8-Bit. So Kadokawa, which is obviously a massive conglomerate in Japan, has bought Doga Kobo, and um, the, I think what they did most recently that was probably popular was Oshinoko. So Oshinoko is now under the umbrella of Kadokawa, assuming it stays with Doga Kobo. Um, it's really a strategic uh, expansion for to, for Doga Kobo. There's the anime industry is becoming huge. I mean, I wish this had happened when I was in high school. Um, then I could have avoided avoided the swirlies. But um, anime the anime industry is now an 18 billion dollar industry, up for uh, up seven percent. And that was in 2022, up seven percent from the prior year. And honestly. Kadokawa wants a piece of that. I think that it's pretty known. Um, the article talks about how there's a very severe shortage of creators and artists in the anime industry, and when you're trying to grow rapidly in that kind of an industry, you need to have good human capital. Well, when and, seven, when you have when you have eighteen billion dollars going into the industry, and seven dollars of which actually goes to the people making it, then that's, that's why true. no one wants to make anime. We have lost so many really, really good creators to video games because video games pay and the hours are just as shit as they are in anime. So might as well go to the, the area that actually pays you. Yeah, I remember Steve Bloom was like, I'm getting the fuck out of anime because in video games, I can actually just like support myself off of voice acting alone. And he wasn't making dick doing uh, voices in anime, even though I love Steve Bloom's work. But yeah. I mean, yeah, we've talked about that before. They don't pay anybody anything, really. I mean, it's kind of... isn't. I, think I don't Mappa, know where that money goes. I don't know. We always assume production production committees. I think MAPPA is like the most abusive one that's come up recently. They're just always in the news. So yeah, I guess... they're just the one that, that people know about. But yeah, Doga Kobo is such an interesting uh, studio, too, because they've done some really good stuff and some very reprehensible stuff, um, anime-wise. Rep reprehensible? Yes. Well, well do, do, do the, tell. Do tell, I mean. Oh, well, there was that one show, which, by the way, I'm not even going to say it was a bad show. Should I, should I really even tell you what the... What the I guess people are wondering what the premise of the show is. Um, uh, it was the show, it was called, like, uh, My my Maid is Unusual or something like that, and it was about this lady who is who is from the military, and she only likes... She's only into girls who haven't gone through puberty yet. What? Um, yeah. Recently, my mate isn't unusual. Yes. And I'm not even going to say it was uh, uh, like it was uh, it had some sweet moments and everything. But I mean, just the premise of the show is enough to like you don't want that on CNN. I don't think but they, they also covered did that. like. Yeah, they also did like Umaru, which I love. And they've done like some some other great shows. So. Uh, Doga, Doga Kobo definitely did My Little Sister is Unusual. Which is probably not much better. So my question of curiosity here is, do you think, well, I mean, usually with such acquisitions comes a change in, like, obviously company mandates and whatnot. So Kadoka being, you know, such a large, predominantly, I guess, print publisher, even though it's like a media conglomerate, conglomerate uh, do we think that this will actually just, like, focus Doga Kobo more in a more, they're just going to go for, like, a more Kadokawa Shoten kind of stuff, or do you think they're gonna? They just bought this studio and not are not gonna use it as just a propaganda arm for anime, uh, for their manga sales, effectively. I I think they're trying to absorb True. the human talent. They're trying to get it where they while the, where they can because there's so few of it that I think they think in order to survive they need to acquire other companies and to get their talent. You know they do. Mention, I mean, sorry, go ahead. They do mention in the article that they're expected to improve the working conditions at the studio. Um, to, we know, can hope. Yeah, but I mean, you know, other than that, I mean, they're just trying to meet the rising demand for anime for themselves. Now, what that means for other companies, I mean, they don't give a fuck, but, you know, they figure they have to make money and their, and their investors want them to grow. And if they're going to grow, they need more talent. I mean, that's pretty much, as far as I can tell, that's probably the bottom line for them. Go ahead. I mean, Go ahead, if Bill. it if it works like it does in video games, which I hope it doesn't, it's buy the studio and then shut them down. That's the entire thing with video game system companies do. But I would think with anime that they actually buy them because of what they like that Doga Kobo does. Um, and that's, you know, my hope is that they're smart enough to just leave them alone and let them do their thing. 
I, I think they're more using them to streamline the manga to anime because like Aniplex does with A1 Pictures and Cloverworks, Katakawa is now going to do with Doug Akobo and all their published stuff is going to be ran through them. Like Oshinoko is Katakawa, I believe. So, I mean, they didn't, so there have been other acquisitions recently. Bandai bought 8-Bit, Toho bought Science Sadu, and, and they haven't shut those studios down to my knowledge, so... I don't know. Jap Japan's kind of a collectivist, so I'm sure they're kind of. I, all I would gonna, hope so. Yeah, they're all going to operate the same way, I think. And I don't know. Japan just seems that they're a country that like to look at what other people do first and see if it's working, and then they copy them. So I wouldn't be surprised if if <laughs> Goga Kobo was like, oh well, you know, like Science Saudi has got a, it's got new animes coming out. So if it's working for Toho, then I don't see why they would shut them down. So I mean, time will tell. Japan also has labor laws that unlike America has. And so you can't like use your talent as like footstools and stuff like you can in America. So, um, and target practice. So you can't, I don't think you can just like fire people in Japan very easily. I was a footstool last week at my office. It hurt. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah, I mean they do have a they do have probably a world record of unreported overtime hours, but you know that's Japan. I think is also famous for loopholes, so their laws are kind of shitty. So, um, anybody else want to add anything to this? It's just an interesting story. I like to talk about it when when we have acquisitions and mergers. It's pretty relevant for anime more than just um, you know the average news story. Anything? Nope. Anybody have a news story? I know Mason's got something, but um, you know we have we do have show notes here. Gerald, do you have anything you want to mention that's newsworthy, or do you do we want to launch right into Mason's? Uh, nothing really in terms of anime news. Ger um, Andrew, Wormy, anything? Uh, right. I'll I'll just bring up the short thing that uh, Kyoto Animation finally put up the little sculpture thing of the for the thirty six people who died. Oh, the really? Fire. Yeah. Yeah. I posted uh, a link. I'll, I, I can post a link maybe. But yeah, it, it looks really pretty. Uh, just doves flying and there's 36 of them to represent the 36 people who died in the arson attack. Is, with, is, like, it, is it like a public monument sort of? Yeah. Outside where okay. the studio burned where down. the studio was, yeah. 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 Man, that studio was right by... I mean, f for people who want to see that, it's right by the Fushimi Inari Temple in Kyoto, so you can go see that pretty easy. It's pretty close by. I think we saw it when we took people, when we took people to Japan, and well, I don't even know what year that was. Two thousand seven, seventeen, twenty seventeen. 2017. Yeah. Seven Andrew, you got ago. anything? No, I Any opinions on the Crunchyroll comments. I I heard about that. I. I thought they just removed it for an anime. I didn't realize they removed it from all the shows. <laughs> like that's I, wild. I have a big problem me. with it. With it, honestly, I I don't want to get into it too much because ultimately everything becomes political. But I I just think it sucks that a couple people said some dumb shit, so they just shut the they shut the comments off for everybody. If that's what if that's what if that's what we're if that's what, if that's what you're referring to, Mason. I just don't think it's. I, it sucks that other people are being punished for something that a couple of dumbasses did. That I would actually want to reframe that conversation in the fact that they aren't willing to pay people to properly moderate their comments. Exactly. And so th it, it's not that just a few people said some stuff that's not cool. It's just that they weren't willing to put in the work to prevent those people from saying those dumb things to keep it a quote unquote safe space for everyone. And well, look, I have a nephew that watches anime on Crunchyroll, uh, so it's not like I want him to see like some crazy stuff as well. Big so, titties. but yeah, it could be moderated, and yeah, they just didn't want to put in the effort for that. Gerald? Yeah, well, I mean, has has anything good come out of Crunchyroll since they were purchased by Sony and since they purchased uh, Right Stuff? Like, come on, it's man. just been this. It's just been this downward, downward slope of just inshittification over and over again. What about so? What about special grade sorcerer or garlic sauce? I mean, come on. Uh, I didn't get any from Crunchyroll. <laughs> Neither did I. Honestly, I the one that. thing I will say is that what did come out of it is that in this uh, fracturization of streaming services, I no longer need a Funimation account. <laughs> so, well, and, and unfortunately, that's a bad thing. Like it's turning into a monopoly. So you basically just have a Crunchyroll account and a High Dive account because nobody watches anime on Disney Plus. Fuck that. So, How about Netflix? 
I do. Netflix. Yeah. You know what? I mean, I guess there's some anime on Netflix too. A there's usually anime. something where they're... there's a few hundred yeah. of them on there. I mean, but, pe- but most people get a, ne- a Netflix account, not for the anime. That's just That's... the ancillary thing. I agree. I don't know. I'm always on this podcast bitching about how people have to buy nine subscriptions to get all the anime. So I can't backpedal now on that. I mean, (laughs) I I do find it annoying that like if I want to watch all the anime we have to cover for this podcast, I need Disney, Hulu, High Dive, Crunchyroll, Netflix, and I'm paying like $60 a month for all this crap. And and it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me as too, because like Disney Plus, they get like two anime a season. And they're like yeah. tip top, really good anime. The and good they don't stuff. advertise them. They never talk about them. They just put them out there. And like last season, we got The Fable, which was like one of the best shows of the season. And no one watched it. No one knows about it. It's just gone. <laughs> it's it's just there. Summertime rendering, they got that too. Like no one watched that. Yeah, Heavenly Delusion is always going to be the biggest one for me. Like they got Did, that and nobody watched it. Does anybody Bobo properly promo right their shit? I'm looking at a chicken nugget I don't know. sauce with it, but yeah, not really. <laughs> well, let's be honest. Well, I mean, yeah. You well, it. when you get a Disney Plus account, what do you get a Disney Plus account for? You get it for Disney shit, you get it for Marvel, and you get it for Star Wars. You know, no one is buying a Disney Plus account because they want to watch the two anime on there. True, and they so. don't even have an anime only section or like as a drop down in their menu, at least on the one I'm using. So it's not okay. like I can just go, I want to see all the anime you have, Disney Plus. I kind of right. just got to hope it shows up in one of the, 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 the whatever those wheel bars are that they call them. And yeah, maybe I'll, like, I'll pick one up. You know, you're like Lady and the Tramp. Oh, you might also like The Fable. No, never. So. Well, everybody knows I hate High Dive, but I also I also have a, my biggest problems with Retro Crush, honestly, because they actually have the stuff I want to watch, but they never add content to it. It's always the same shit all the time. So I actually turned that crap off. I was like, this is not worth even five bucks a month. So, But Retro Crush does have a, good, a lot of good shit. Um, Retro Crush is pretty good, yeah. Mason, what do you got for your big Well, news? I've got news for you. You guys are all stupid and wrong. Crunchyroll is the best streaming platform ever <laughs> because it has Rent-A-Girlfriend. Yeah. And oh. my big news of the week is that Rent-A-Girlfriend Rent Season 4 announced come out next year. So in... A mere seven years God. since the manga launch. We are already on four seasons of this peak anime performance. You love to see it. Everyone, uh, no one I've ever talked to hates the show. Everyone is just over the moon. Number one rated show on Mal, ending list. Everyone loves it. And uh, you can see why. It just keeps on winning. So there you go. That's the big news. Well, Mike, don't, don't back check anything I just said. Just know it in your heart to be true, and then we can uh, move on. My question is I just is, want to post that picture that says doubt. But uh, mm, mm. press X slamming that right now. <laughs> will Kazuya get laid? No. This so I will tell you this is the infamous pool scene season. I thought so that was last season. I, that's what the reader said, but they lied to me. You can Fucking can you trust liars. readers of this show? I wouldn't trust so anyone he, who watches. So, he, so he's not show. getting laid. It's just getting worse for him. God damn. He's just drowning in it in yeah. all the worst ways. They're, but uh, they're gonna have a show. I have not watched anything past season one of this show <laughs> they're gonna have a rental therapist because this kid's gonna be so fucked up by the time he finishes dealing with chizuru chizu, he's gonna have such a warped opinion of like sex and relationships it's gonna be terrible yeah he, he's say... not doing it right honestly he just needs to go to the soap plan and just and just and just and just, and just get this get this dealt with you know he's he's not thinking clearly it's the poison and you know the man's got to do what he's got to do but someone i don't think Kazuya's dad ever taught him how to be a man so Wormy, uh, your defense. Shit. Yeah, what do you think? He agrees. He laughs. I yeah. I I don't like Run a Girlfriend. I've read 170 ish chapters of it. It's over 300 chapters long now. So we're not even halfway it's through what could long. be adapted. And he actually hasn't. He doesn't know how to. He went on a little hiatus and started oh. another like incest pseudo incest manga that's getting an anime soon. So we can be excited <laughs> for that too. Is. When you hold up your fingers like that for incest, does that mean like stepsisters or yeah, something? They're his step siblings. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so, Ameri- so, the, so the American porn style, so they can still like get their credit cards charged. Yeah, it's so like yeah. him in a house with six stepsisters, <laughs> and I don't, yeah, I didn't read that one though. So I do find what, it, a, what a unique premise. I I do find it amazing that uh, 
I'm just looking at the Rent a Girlfriend page here, and this might be one of the only times when the lead female character is actually outshined by the looks of her voice actress, because her voice actress, Soda Amamiya, is absolutely gorgeous. It's so insane. Yeah. And it's like, they couldn't even draw somebody more attractive than the voice actress. They couldn't do I it if they fucking tried. She's the voice actress for uh, Aqua from Konosuba. So. Yeah, All right. she is. Okay. Anything else, guys? Nah, let's let's get to it. <laughs> let's get to while, while we're here, actually. All right. It's time for Around the Horn. Are you ready? Are you ready, Andrew? Yeah, we're going right into it. Yeah. We're going right fucking into it. Are you ready? I, I am ready. Are you ready? It's time for Anime Around the Horn. Featuring special guest host, the purveyor of Gundam, the Frigimon fanatic himself and friend of the podcast, it's Andrew. And he's got the bow tie on. Here it is. I told you, surprises for all. Hello, everybody, and welcome Um, to Anime Around the Horn. You're going to have to explain the rules to us again, Andrew. It's your show. I'm I'm about to explain the rules that I'm going to... To- and I'm totally not reading it off of a document off to the side here. Um, around the anime horn. I guess I should. I guess that's what the actual segment is called. So here are the rules. There are going to be a variety of discussion topics that are presented. The contestants, that's the word I was looking for, have no idea what's coming up. I didn't put it in the document. It's going to be a surprise. They're going to be doing this off the top of their chrome domes. So there we go. They got to figure this out. They're going to take turns discussing the topics, trying to make convincing points, and the player with the fewest awarded points will be eliminated. So we're going to do... Oh, yeah, and during this, I'm not going to say point minus point just to keep the flow going. I'm just going to put my thumb up, and I'm going to mark it down. I'm going to put my thumb down when I think you're going to lose a point for I, not I, making convincing arguments. I, I hate to overrule you, but I have a scoreboard on the on the Twitch, and I actually need you to do that. I have to say point. Well, that's a, we're well, just look at him and he'll get, he'll do the thumbs up. Uh, d- 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 All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Or All right. I don't know. Make like, it harder for me. Make it harder for uh, me. But that's okay. Because I, I, I love you anyway. I feel like it really breaks the flow if I say point me, in the middle of someone's. Look, Tubuku, uh, yeah. I love you a long time. It's okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because I don't know. Last time I recognized that it interrupted people's flow of conversation, so I thought this would be like point, not point. You know, I'm just gonna say point. Screw it. Learn to not be <laughs> he just slow caves. interrupted. He caves. Just like... <laughs> I caved immediately. No. Um, yeah, so we're going to go. There's going to be four rounds from what I can tell, uh, just for time's sake, more likely. So there's going to be two topics for the first. So that's two questions. And then someone's going to get eliminated. There's going to be another question for three people, and that person's going to get eliminated. And there's going to be a third and final round where those people are going to go head to head and whoever wins that one uh, basically gets to talk about whatever they want to uninterrupted. So I guess uh, the points are per round. It's not a cum- is it cumulative. It's cumulative. It's cumulative. Oh God. Okay. I'm All right. Track. And remember. I got you. I got you. Um. I, so to be fair, I'm I'm going to be a little bit more lenient on the on uh, Gerald and Wormy because they don't know me. And as well, and so they don't know how to appeal to my basal urges. So I might be a little bit more lenient with them, just to be fair, because some of you here have known me since 2017 and might know how to tug at my heartstrings. So I gotta keep it a little bit. I gotta like take biases into account. All right. So does anybody need clarification on anything that was just said? I don't understand a single thing, but I will go with it. If you're an asshole, okay. you got it, baby. Okay. If you're oh, an, if oh, you're an asshole, perfect. you can be frozen like this, and uh, Andrew would just tell you that you can't speak for the rest of the round. Oh, I forgot about that power. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, so, what are we all playing for today? What are we all here to play? Man, I haven't hosted a thing in forever. What are we all here for today? A minute of uninterrupted, whatever you want to say. Probably within TOS, obviously, because we're... <laughs> Gerald, have you seen uh, this on ESPN? ESPN? 
Well, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck should I know? It's a, it's it's a, the for this is an exact. This is exactly. The only, the, I fucking the, the only time I've ever seen ESPN is with that weird guy with the with the like wife beater like chats around in my gym class. Like, what? Who's that <laughs> football player? That. Uh, well, I have no. Yeah, that guy that's on like seven hours a day on ESPN. <laughs> Oh, I, I trust me. I don't. Well, I, do we? Even, we have ESP. Anyway, long story short is I'll give you a question. Uh, so I'm not using this question, um, but who knows? Uh, you got to time it as well. Like, we, we don't want people to go on forever. Oh, uh, what did we decide on? How much time each person? Goes? I think thirty, 30 seconds. seconds thirty seconds. Is yeah, good. sounds good. All right. So I, I'll also have a score pad here just to make sure that people are um, the the scores match up. So I'll, I'll say here's the question. Um, should more Western video game franchises be adapted into anime? And then you'll each get a chance to convince me of your point. And it doesn't, is it either if you're for or against uh, or whatever your point is and try to convince me of it. And you get points as your argument becomes more convincing or less convincing. If you make a completely bog standard, very boring, I might just go minus point. Um, or I guess I'll say plus minus plus. Yes, plus for point, minus for not minus point. There we go. Um, yeah, and that's basically the concept, you know. So like, should Western more Western video game franchises be adapted into anime? And then you can pull up examples. I'm like, yeah, uh, look at what they did with the X Men, and I might say minus points because nobody cared about that. Uh, <laughs> or that we can topic? say something. No, no, that was no, no. That's oh, the one I'm on, not man. using. That was well, last time we played. Topic. Long story short, uh, you have 30 seconds to make an argument. Make it a good argument. I was so ready for. Doesn't yeah. matter what side of the argument you're taking. Yeah, uh, I don't know how do we want to do. So I guess uh, you're in control uh, here. I guess man. I can randomize. Huh? You're in control here. Uh, I know, but I just I you know you know uh number oh hold on you I don't know need what that I mean. just call on us. Yeah, but I want to make it random on who's going first, so I'm just going to roll a die. Uh, <laughs> and uh, here we go. Ah, my D, trusty D4. There's is only the, four. Is the die blue? It is blue and green. It matches your giant bow No, tie. it matches your walls, your bow, your shirt, and your bottom. It has, You'd love it, to it's, see it. It, it, it. It's blue tipped. It's okay. blue tipped. I, I do have a blue one, but I didn't oh, want to go D4. digging for four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to go digging for it. So I'm just going to say I'm going to assign one to Gerald, two to Mason, three to Mitz, and four to Wormy. Uh, I think, yeah, so that sounds good. So yeah, all right. Now, Gerald, do you understand the rules? <laughs> I hope so. You're just, like, you're just arguing. Let's your, just go with it. You're just arguing. I, I get with, it. Whatever uh, side of the conversation you come out on, you're just arguing your side of things. That's all it is. Yeah. Let's go okay. with it. All right, so question one to be asked. All right. Um, given that we just talked about rental girlfriend or rent a girlfriend, and I've never seen it, so I assume it's just, you know, fan servicey trash. But is there such a thing as too much fan service? Eagle eared viewers might remember this question from the first time, but. That's why this is the retro question. And now we roll the die. Mason, you are up first. Oh, baby. Actually, uh, give me a second while I get a timer up. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds. Mason what do you want to hear? What argument do you want to hear, Fridger? You want to hear too much or not enough? It's up to you. That's, that's I know. I don't... <laughs> you know what, Mason? Because it's you, I uh -huh. want you to give me a uh, there's not enough. There's argument. not enough. Okay. Yeah, let's go from that. All right. Ready? Set? Yep. Go. So there is no such thing as too much fan service in any anime. Everything that's in a show, unlike live actions, is there for a particular intent by the author, which makes every single fan Point. service, booty shot, boo shot, purposely entitled, crafted by hand to employ Point. some sort of emotional resonance within you. Now... Could it be more titillating and distract from this thing? Allegedly, but I believe that under all those beautiful skin curves that are presented to you, there's always a foundation, a structure that makes it valuable added content. Right. Time. All right. Next up, we have... <laughs> we're just going to go in order. Mitz, you're up. Ready? Well, for, 
Yeah. First of all, I want to say that Mason said that that there wasn't a such thing as too much fan service in any anime. I challenge him to see how much he likes fan service in his Tatami Galaxy. I figure probably not too well. The um, dude crawls up a rock wall full of boobs. I don't know if it can get more than that. There are. The reason I would why th- love to give you a point for saying that statement, but I can't. The reason That's why there, the reason why there's not too much fan service in anime is because there's anime that are made to have fan service and anime that are made to not have fan service. If we sat Caroline down in front of Wicked City, she'd never get through it because it's just not made for her. So the anime is the fan service is clearly a fuel to draw the flies to the flame of looking at titties and ass and to make money off the figures, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you want to go watch, you know, My Neighbor Totoro, you can do that. Although I do have a uh, well, I did buy a doujin from a from Comic Cat once from Studio Ghibli, so <laughs> it's neither here nor there. But um. I'm- <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. Well, All right. My fault Totoro doesn't wear pants. Make of that what you will. Neither does Donald Duck, and I guess we all accept it, right? Neither does Naushka, but that's neither, you know, whatever. Uh, Wormy, are you ready? Yeah. All right, go. There is too much fan service in oh! anime. The way anime puts this fan service in, it forms the futures of everybody. You see a foot in anime, you become a foot lover. Like, what is that? Point. You see, you see a hentai spider shoot a web out of her, no blank space, and you're like, what is that? Like, all of the fan service in anime forms into the future society and makes them what they are. You watch Rent a Girlfriend, and he rents a girlfriend. You go rent a girlfriend, thinking, hey. This is how I can get a girlfriend. You go to a soap land thinking, Time. I can, okay. <laughs> it's so Time's... hard to argue that way because I don't Our think that way. Are being corrupted? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gerald. You're oh, up. boy. Uh, I say that there is not enough fan service in fan service anime. And I specifically identify fan service anime. There are certain animes that should not have a lot of fan service in them. But there are certain shows Fine. that do have good amounts of fan service. Shows like Manu Hikensho, which makes a very good argument that a governmental system can be adequately run based upon the size of women's breasts. Now, there are other shows, such as Sekon no Quasar, that has extensive amounts of fan service to the point that there is a song out there called Bored with Tits. And halfway through the show, there are so many tits, you actually get bored with the tits. Point. So I feel Time. like that, that can be... Okay. I can keep going. <laughs> I want to hear oh, the end of that sentence. I don't want to get any more points out of it. I just want to hear the end of it. Sure. If you can finish your sentence, it will only count uh, for points. But it I don't even know. Content. I don't even know where I was going. Go- uh, I think I was going to probably bring up Valkyrie Drive Mermaid, which is like also like ridiculously fan servicey, but also was made for that. So okay, um, I would never get tired of tits. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. But... <clears throat> just All watch right, Sick on I... the Quasar. Fifty-two episodes of titty sucking. <laughs> It's the one where they get I, so that, that, I, I, they get power from the breast milk or something, isn't that how that wasn't that how that one? Goes yes, down? It, it is. It is the breast. There's an amazing shot at the end where the main guy like is is like running towards and like does this like upside down jump over a girl and then like in like slow motion grabs her tit and like sucks on the tit and then like jumps over her like acrobatically. It is it is art. It is art in 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 anime. So that is. Um, that's Da Vinci like shit right there. It may not. Yes. It may never get better than that. Right. <laughs> All right okay. Andrew. So this one, I'm gonna give you a moment to think about it. This is a pretty um, big question. I think I'll even. You know what? I'll. I think 30 seconds might have been good for that last one because it's a mm-hmm. retro question. Yep. I'll give you each a minute to argue your points oh, for wow. this next one. Okay. Uh, because I think it should prove very interesting discussion. You don't have to take the full minute. You won't be docked for not taking the full minute, but I'll give you a minute. At what point in a series should the best episode be? I'll give you a moment to think about that. And that's not even the finals question. Just wait. I think I'm good. All right, mm. and I rolled a three, which means, Mitz, you are going up first. Uh, let me just get the timer set. Are you ready? We'll find out. 
and go. You're living in a TikTok world, and uh, anime is pretty much uh, driven by younger people these days, high school kids and whatnot, and they're all glued to their tablets. You got to have that episode, that that best episode, early in the anime. It needs to be real early, um, maybe within the first three or four episodes. You're not going to be able to hold people's attention long enough to keep them through the rest of the show if you're not going to hook them from the beginning. And honestly, I'm no exception. You know, I get I get bored easily. And I need to have a good amount of pacing in my anime. So if the anime is not lighting me on fire from the beginning, it's just going to fall into another one of these shoujo slice of life shows that never really does a whole lot. And I get bored and I lose my focus. You may never even finish it. Now, a show needs to have some good, it needs to have a climax somewhere in, in I would say, the middle of the show towards the three quarters point because there's always going to be something impactful that happens in the plot line. Um, but it doesn't. But you need to have something happen that's very impactful, and you need to get that hook into their skin early because people just don't I, have they don't have the attention span. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Uh, next up, I will get throwing it to you, Wormy, because we're just. Oh no! Actually, screw that. I'm gonna roll another die. I'm not gonna be predictable. Ugh. Oh, actually, you know what? I rolled the die twice and it came up for me. Wormy, you're up next. <laughs> All right. Ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's go. There should be no single best episode of anime. Every episode should have the capability of being someone's best episode. Start right. off the best episode with a hook to set the people that need that quick pace, quick hook. Uh, as the series goes along, character development, maybe deaths, hook. Plot development, world building, hook. Just keep the pace going. And as it moves along, every episode has the capability of hooking the person in. Add a romance element to hook somebody. Just keep throwing darts at a wall. Throwing darts. Romance. A slice of life arc. Go all Mushoku Tensei. Goes from adventure to slice of life to romance to everything. That's all I got. All right. Uh, I will also give you a, a point there for just throwing shit at the wall. I love it. Uh, honestly, subversion. Nice subversion there. Love that one. All right. You guys got some work to do. Um, all right. Odds, Mason, evens, Gerald. Um, Mason, you're up. Uh, obviously episode four. There's not even a debate about this. <laughs> episode one, what are you, a coward trying to lead off with Boy. best friend? Get out of here. Episode 12, you're so predictable. Episode seven, what are you, a pervert watching the beach episode? No. Episode four is the best and here's why. All the cowards who do the three episode rule are already filtered out, so you get only the fans left. And then you top them with the reward. And then the best part is it doesn't get better. So you're gaslighting the people who didn't watch it to be like, oh, the show got so good after you dropped it. But then they watch episode four get hyped and then go back to the run of the rest of the show. And they're like, wait, was episode four that good? Why did I keep on watching it? It screws everyone over and it's perfect. No one wins, which makes it the best. Oh, wait. All right. Okay. Maybe a minute's too long, but you still get the minute, Gerald. Are you ready? Let's go for it. All right. Go. <laughs> So I believe that the best episode of the show should lean towards the end of the show. I lived in an era where we had Gonzo, the Gonzo company. They produced incredibly nice looking first episodes. Everything after that was garbage. And a lot of these shows are completely forgotten. Now, uh, I believe a, a good ending is what endures and what that's the impression that the show leaves you with. For example, Oshinoko, best episode of that? First episode, that 90-minute episode, very good. Now, the problem is, is that the show decided to forget that the main character was a trained doctor and did nothing with that, and it had a shitty show after that, bad ending. I don't give a shit about that show anymore. Nadia, very, very good ending episode. It had an entire island arc that is one of the worst pieces of anime that's ever been made, but... It ended incredibly well. People remember that show. People still recommend that show. Shows with bad endings should are are generally not remembered and generally not recommended after that. So I what? believe I, I it uh, should be uh, be heavily weighted towards the end of the show. I'm all right. After two rounds, we have a tie for third place. I will okay. I will opt to uh, to be eliminated because I won the last round the horn. So. <clears throat> 
I'm making okay. it easy for you. Well, I, I mean, I was going to roll a die, and... Oh, look, Mitz is eliminated. I'm sorry. Take care now. Bye-bye, <laughs> then. Loser. <clears throat> okay. Now that we've all dipped our toes into this game, uh, the current points should be Mason with six, um, Gerald with four, and Wormy with three. Does that match up with I sure my got assessment? that. Well, by God, I do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So, y'all ready for the semifinals this? question? Do, 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 do. Oh, sorry. And I, I liked I liked all the answers. I liked all the answers. I think that was a fun question that like spread everything out into a nice little way. <laughs> I'm like, are we going into a news break? Oh no. <laughs> uh, all right. So I kind of may have a little bit given away this question, okay? But and I also didn't word it in the best way possible. So I'm just gonna like lampshade that on before I bring it up here. There, you know, we're gonna give you, you know what? 45 seconds, because I think that's a sweet spot for everybody. Uh, we're going to give you 45 seconds to answer this. I'll give you a moment to get ready, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we have things uh, like... Um... No, actually, I don't even have an intro for this one. Should more Western fantasy be adapted into anime? Yeah, that should be an interesting. Should more Western fantasy be adopted into an adapted into anime? Um, yeah, I don't know what you would consider fantasy, but I guess that's what part of the 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 question is as well. And um, here we go. I, uh, four Mitz gets to decide who starts. Uh, one Gerald, two Mason, three Wormy, two Mason. Uh, are we starting? I, if you, are you ready? Yeah, sure. I don't care. <laughs> Perfect start. 45 uh, seconds. I haven't seen the Isekai Suicide Squad, so I don't know yet. Once I watch that, that will be the determiner of if Western media should ever be adapted into anime again. Uh, no, jokes aside, I think it should. I think uh, fantasy is a great genre. There's so much potential. There's so much boundless possibility in it. And what we've been getting out of a lot of these light novel schlocks that are just copying the formula... We need something new. We need something to break up the formula. And I think Western media is a perfect avenue, whether that be games, whether that be just novels we get over here. There's just so much rich content that would work so well as an anime that I think it would be a buffoonery of us to just ignore that in favor of just more middling of the road stuff. So, yeah, I absolutely think we should get more Western adapted stuff in anime. Okay, time. Okay, uh, next up, we're going to do Gerald. Okay, uh, are we ready? I'm ready when you are. Okay, let's go. So I say, I say that the question is a little bit vague. Are we talking about Western style in anime, or are we talking about existing properties in anime, like Game of Thrones, like Lord of the Rings? We're already getting a Lord of the Rings anime that's going to suck because it's entirely CG and directed by a guy that sucks. So I feel like that's going to be an argument for not for not using that. The problem is, is that fantasy is an extremely broad genre that is used incredibly narrowly in anime. If we talk about isekai, everyone is using the same goddamn video game that they're playing. The same tropes, everything's a fucking wizard, every, there's always knights and everything, so I say no. I think we should need to more sci-fi stuff adapted into anime. Ooh, screw, screw this western fantasy. I'm sick and tired of seeing all of the western fantasy in anime. We've got too Hi. much of it. We have, and we need to move on to something else. Ah, uh, yeah, no, and uh, I mean, I was, I, I was retroactive point there, but not for the what statement. What if the but main the... character was a vending machine? Uh, that is how yo, a few ideas that was have now. <laughs> great, you you watch yourself, Mason. <laughs> uh, I love that show. Anyway, Wormy, you're up. Uh, Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. We need more Western fantasy adaptations into anime. A rising tide lifts all boats. Western fantasy gets adapted. Decent anime. They both rise. And I'm counting oh. as future fantasy, which is sci-fi. So stuff like Dune as anime style, you get a sci-fi traveling around the space, fantasy, powers, worm people, dunes. You... I, it's hard. 
more more worms than anime. That's yeah. <laughs> that's wormy stands. <laughs> but with more uh, Western fantasy adapted, you'll just see better written shows rather than the isekai schlock that we always get twenty of every season. Fair point, and that's time. All right. Don't worry, it's not easy. I feel like I have the easiest job at being the one who just has to say things like wherever I want. Um, but yes, you could you could do it just a minute style, which is like an old radio show where people had to make an argument, but if they repeated themselves or paused, then they were shut down immediately, <laughs> and they had to talk for a minute solid. It's an old radio show. Yeah, I guess so. I the mean, the filler but... bustering of anime arguing. <laughs> fair, 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 fair. I'm not gonna go too far. All right. So unfortunately, Wormy, you have the least amount of points. You are. <clears throat> Take care now. Bye bye then. Loser. <laughs> All right. That leaves us with this the final I, round. This is how I expected it to be. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> with Gerald, who has six points, and Mason, who has seven points. It's, it's a, a fluke. tight it's race, a fluke. I'm about to get filtered. I know it. I know it. Uh, okay. Um, I will give ask, you some time to think about this. Ask us something really controversial that'll get us canceled, and then then we can really, really <laughs> like push this, push this really far. Uh, I don't actually. So this last question, I'm going to oh, admit, no. uh, I didn't come up with this one. Uh, I had a friend of the podcast, Bcom, help me with some of these questions. Oh, Bcom. And yeah, so no, he's evil. Uh, he's evil. I'm quaking. He now. came up with he came up with this last one. I don't know if it'll get you canceled. We're definitely not making up slurs here or anything like that. So don't worry, it's not gonna be that bad. Um, but I think this might, you know, some people might have uh, a little bit. No one's gonna. We're come not up pussies out of here. Just one. let us have it. Come on. I'm just I'm preambling, but it's a really it's a really fun question. I liked it the moment I, I read it. It'll give you some time to think about it. Would you rather an anime have a bad script and stellar animation or bad animation and an amazing script? Or anywhere in that well actually not anywhere in that spectrum but yeah or even actually yeah but that's the the main dichotomy actually no screw it i'm sticking with it would you rather have a, a bad script with a stellar binary. bad yeah. script with stellar animation or a bad animation with stellar script writing all right i'll give you some uh, i'll give you 30 seconds or so to think about it uh, as we go to our our sponsors uh, and the side gallery here. Hello, uh, Mitz. Uh, mm -hmm, I see yes. you've been podcasting a lot lately. Yeah. Uh, isn't this like a great time to talk about like the great value that is the um, the anime podcast, uh, aapodcast.com membership, where you get access to you'll, you'll, show notes? You will hear about how Japan has better customer service than America, even at a soap lamp. They will do a better job of working on you with their feet than you will get at an American restaurant. And you don't have to tip them, but you'll give them just the tip. That's what I have to say about that. Oh, back to you. <laughs> all right. And now I think our contestants have had enough time to think about it, and we've done all of our, uh, you know, intended promo uh, for the segment. I'm going to roll odds, Mason. Evens. Apparently, I am brain farting. Gerald. Gerald. Uh, odds, Mason, you get to go first. Oh, I always get to go first. It's, it's a shame. I was just going to oppose whatever Gerald said. Uh, <laughs> that was Perfect. that was my game plan. Now I have to think for myself, which is unfortunate. You're caught off guard. I know, I know. All right. I, I will give you 45 seconds, because that's the sweet spot. Ready? Yeah. Go. I think anime needs to have good animation more than good writing, because A... Have you seen what's successful nowadays? Come on, that, that's how you're going to make the money. Um, but more importantly, despite the fact that most anime fans don't have a great eye for animation itself, unfortunately, uh, we are coming to this medium for the animation. So if I really wanted a good story, I could get that in so many other avenues. I can't go to podcasts for good animation. I can't go to live action TV shows for good animation. I can't read a book for good animation. I only can go to animation to get that fix. And as much as I would love every show to be just point really well written and so many shows can succeed without good animation i mean just look at pretty much all the shows i enjoy uh 
there really is no substitute for that good doki doki hypeness saku fest straight into your veins uh, uh sorry i uh uh, you, you got uh, did you at the point I gave I gave him a second point. I got that second the, point. You got I'm the all, penny okay, point. I'm all good. over it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gerald. Okay. Final wire. You have a lot to do. Can you do Let's it? Let's do this. Okay. I Go. believe. I believe that if you have to, if you can't have both, if you can't have both amazing animation and amazing script, you need to have an amazing script and lesser animation. The reason for this is if you want your show to endure, and endure, a nice animation might get people in the short term, but it's not going to get people in the long term. As an example, Point. the original Macross series from 1982, so that, that show had some god-awful animation at times. It had some amazing animation at times, but just go look up Macross Knife Fight. Now, people still remember that show because Point. it had an excellent, excellent script going for it. Then there are shows like I feel, and this might be unpopular, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, not a terrible show, or not a terrible show, really. Great animation. That show's going to be forgotten. No one is going to I'm... remember that show Ooh. in about 10 or 15 years. It's going to be a new thing that comes out. There's other shows like Little Nemo in Slumberland. Amazing animation, <laughs> animated movie. No one is, remembers that fucking movie. No one on the show has seen that movie, um, but it looks amazing. That's an example of a great animation and a terrible script. Other shows like Harmageddon, which oh, okay. I love. No one has seen that show movie. Y you didn't win so you're not gonna get the full minute here i'm sorry but uh <laughs> you're good <What? laughs> I, I love I, the example someone <laughs> else doesn't someone else doesn't suck demon slayer's balls that's that's so refreshing oh I mean, it's fine no i'm, I'm, I'm bored <laughs> with the show god i'm just, um i've seen all of this already i think mason wins no no, actually, no. did i lose two four six oh yeah by one point that's what i got too <clears throat> oh shame now i have to talk even more yeah i as second place you got that extra 30 seconds there to talk about <laughs> the extra craziness i love the examples though all right mason you have one minute uninterrupted to talk about whatever you want with um just to continue my point i know wormy and i have talked about it more than animation more than script uh characters are the most important thing to any show ever uh, give me that, and I'll be happy. Um, McDonald's is awful. I don't re recommend anyone ever go there. I really, truly, really from the bottom of my heart, sympathize with anyone who now has a craving for anything from that awful store. Uh, I was Lacoris recoiling the second I walked into that. that <laughs> kids everywhere. They didn't even have a play place for me to play. Why, why am I going to McDonald's if they don't have a play place? Um, new Monogatari series is uh, popping off. Love it so far. And... Uh, Excited to get back to a less chaotic show next week because I my brain is fried after this. But uh, thank you all for playing. I had fun. I don't know. That's I want, that's it. Uh, you have twenty seconds. Uh, um, don't forget to tip your waiter. AAPodcast.com. Pay for that bonus content. We did an awesome hentai episode last week. Uh, I know some of you guys heard it because there's a free sample, so don't miss out on that. Um, Andrew is really cool. Go visit Montreal. Uh, Ooh, the looks good. Okay. <laughs> and that's all I got. Awesome. Just in time. And everybody will stick around for the Wicked City review. So, Oh, please do. I have a wild, sort of a wild uh, intro trivia question for you guys. The art director from Wicked City is Kazuo, Kazuo Oga. Hayao Miyazaki was so impressed with Oga's art direction in this movie that he hired him to work on a Ghibli film which came out around the same time. What is this movie? And when we get back, we'll have the answer to that. We'll do a couple mailbags, and then we'll get into a wild as fuck movie, Wicked City. So stay tuned for the review, and we'll be back in a minute. Daddy Mitz is here to bring you your anime news break, getting us started off with another anime coming from Science Saru called Sanda, which is getting an anime adaptation. Sanda is a manga done by Padu Itagaki, who also was the original creator of Beastars. The plot synopsis sounds perfectly stupid, so the 
The story starts with Sonda, a second year middle school student, getting stabbed by a kitchen knife by one of his classmates, writes off the whole stabbing as just having to do with the classmate's weird puberty phase, which just makes no sense at all. And then uh, Furimura actually suspects that Sonda is a descendant of a certain lineage. And if you look at the photos of the manga, it's pretty obvious that Sonda is just Santa Claus. So as it's literally a guy with a white beard wearing a red outfit that looks just like Santa. So if you feel like watching what I think is a shonen action anime uh, <laughs> featuring a fifth, effectively Santa Claus, look out for Sonda coming out here by Science Sadu. Next up, Karakai Jozuno Takagi-san's creator is beginning a new manga. So the teasing master Takagi-san's author, Soichiro Yamamoto, is going to be doing a new manga titled Mane Mane Nichi Nichi. So uh, if you are a fan of fun titles, it looks like this one is going to be a baseball story. So at least they are featured in the photo. The daily life of three managers of a high school baseball team. Of course, they're all girls, as it seems like every manager of a baseball team that's ever been featured in an anime is a girl. But I will probably be watching as I love sports anime. So look out for Mane Mane Nichi Nichi having both the most fun title ever and also being made into a manga and probably a anime later also as well next up hollywood nominates solo leveling in its first time best anime series category for the astro awards so it looks like the astro awards have officially announced their nominees for their upcoming annual show which includes a category for best anime series aimed at honoring outstanding works from the previous year and aside from solo leveling there are a few other shows that were recognized as well um netflix's adaptation of naoki urasawa's pluto is nominated as well the Western produced Blue Eye Samurai, which means that it's not even anime at all. The cult classic Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which I'm also pretty sure is not an anime in, in truth. This Crunchyroll is representing is represented by Solo Leveling as well as Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. So there's a lot of good anime in this category, whether they're anime or not. But it's cool to see anime getting entered into an award show that some people recognize. And next up, Crunchyroll reveals why it removed all comments from its website amid major fan confusion so crunchyroll has announced that they have removed its comment sections from their entire website including all streaming content which had people very confused and in a crunchyroll they are quote they are prioritizing creating a safe and respectful community environment to maintain this standard we are removing all existing user generated content including comments across all platforms and experiences sounds like somebody got their feelings hurt so if you're a fan of Crunchyroll and you have left comments on anything, I guess, on their website, well, those comments now no longer exist. This was Mitsugi, and this was your anime news break. And now, time to get back to the podcast. If you've been working hard at your job and you're driving home late... It's dark outside and your eyes are so very tired. I know, work is hard. But fear not, you have your podcast to listen to. Oh, what's that? You're all out of podcasts. Well, then on your way home, you'll probably accidentally catch a few seconds of shut-eye, drift off and play the role of truck coon, sending some hapless person to an isekai world. Sounds fine, maybe, but they'll probably land butt-naked in some town square and be ridiculed and harassed into a life of sadness and poverty. If only you had the AAA podcast extra content to listen to, we would have entertained you all the way to the safety of your home with our hentai episodes, our after-parties, and our hobby addicts episodes. After all, who doesn't like the party? And what would keep you more entertained than talk of your favorite video games, TV series, and of course, anime boobies? Don't be a truck coon. Head over to aaapodcast.com slash join, or maybe you'll go to patreon.com slash aaapodcast and support the show today. Again, that's aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon.
Welcome back to the podcast. When we left you, we had a trivia question for you, slightly harder than usual. The art director for Wicked City is Kazuo Oga. Hayao Miyazaki was so impressed with Oga's art direction in this movie that he hired him to work on a Ghibli film that came out around the same time. What is this movie? From from titties to kitties, it's My Neighbor Totoro coming in hot. Can you imagine? <laughs> the guy who did the art direction for Wicked City turns around in a circle, comes back six months later, and does Totoro. What the fuck? Oh, uh, wait. Oh, the best part of the song. I need to show my wife MD Geist. Just, he's so cool. It's she just fucking so is. cool. Just don't show her the sequel. Or That's, actually MD Geist. Geist is going to riz my wife up. Oh, God. Well, don't show your... Did you show your wife Wicked City? Not yet, but I might. Oh. I might. You're going to have no wife soon. <laughs> Sometimes we bring her on the hentai episodes just to shock her. I let her pick a show, and then we... She's not, she's not real big into hentai or anything, but... People like to hear people struggle. People would like to hear Caroline struggle if we could get her on there. But uh, well, anyway. I mean, this is a this is a sausage party talking about this movie, and I feel like we, we need some. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> I think we need a a a female perspective on this movie because it is so anti women. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say. So. I think Pancake would love the tits in this movie. Um, but I don't know. We'll get to the movie soon. Let's First, let's do a mailbag. It's time for an almighty oh, anime shit. mailbag. Anime. 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 M -m -m mailbag. Bag, 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 bag. If you want to leave a mailbag, we have all sorts of options for you at aaapodcast.com slash mailbag. You can leave the mailbag just like, boy, this is a tough name. Rachie did. Hello. Hi. Hi, AAA. I hope all is well with y'all. After watching anime for nearly two decades, now I got to thinking about some shows I watched when I was younger that were good then, but I would have, but I maybe would have enjoyed them more now that I'm a little older. For example, I watched Space Brothers in early high school and liked it but would maybe have appreciated it more after after becoming an adult myself. Do you have any shows that you wish you could unwatch and rewatch for the first time now as an adult? I'm going to start with Gerald. Gerald is the guest, so. Unwatch? Because I thought it was going to say unwatch because they were so bad, and so I could, <laughs> like, remove them from my memory um, and rewatch again as an adult. Um, but so, like, so you could experience them again. I mean, I wish I could rewatch. watch um, uh, What's it? Uh, I wish I could rewatch. Uh, Do you remember Love from uh, Macross? Because uh, I did not get to watch that in its like the best form first time because I watched the best film and video Hong Kong dub of that. Um, Hong Kong dub. Did not... Yes, it was. A, well, it was a Hong Kong dub with American expats, a, a group that did a lot of anime dubbing at the time. Um, and so, uh, and I hadn't watched the original Macross at the time. I, actually, I might have watched Robotech. Um, so I would have loved to like see that one again, like for the first time. Let's see. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Wormy. He's kind of a guest too. Well, I didn't watch anime growing up. I didn't watch anime until I was almost 21 years old, at a full-time job. So, but I did like stuff that would pop up when I was younger. I would watch like the hentai stuff, which I probably should not have been watching. And I would not want to go back and rewatch that stuff. So <laughs> it's probably good. Uh, but I've rewatched everything that I watch now. I've already watched Freerun three times. Jujutsu Kaisen season two, three times. So like, wow. I just, I'm a rewatcher. So Andrew, how about you? This is such a hard question. Like it's it's really so I went to my anime list and I looked at all of my tens, right? And it's 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 really funny because I look at all my tens and I go back and I I I, I feel like I re-experience those emotions sometimes when I watch that show. Some of those shows that I have as tens. So like I look at you know something like Redline or uh, oh, so Princess good. Mononoke, like those things. Like yep. 
I'll or I'll watch those and I'll like I'll feel those emotions again. I'm like, oh, it's why I really liked it. Or even Anohana or Genshikin, like these motions like are with me. Um, I guess it's so hard to say. So I kind of like went down to my nines, and I I I think I'm gonna have like like uh, <laughs> like two really odd answers here. Um, I want to go back and re-experience. Actually, this one's not odd. This one falls into my whole the the Meist, Meister of Gundam purveyors. Purveyor or, of I Gundam. forget what my name is here. There we go. That's the one. Uh, I'm gonna say I want to go back and rewatch Gundam X. Like I love that show. I'm so sad it got canceled, and I would love to rewatch it. And then the silly one is I would honestly like to go back and rewatch School Rumble for the first time. <laughs> um, yeah, that one was really ridiculous, and I remember having a good time, and it was just like that zeitgeist, and I want to go back and like re-experience that if I could erase it and rewatch it. Andrew, I haven't watched Zeta yet, but I will. I've been bad. I've been bad. I'm sorry. I'm very disappointed in you. All right, Mason, how about you? Yeah, I like Andrew's point that like the whole like, oh, I wish I could rewatch something for the first time. Honestly, the best shows hold up on the rewatches. And we've definitely talked about the, you know, what would you forget to watch again for the first time? But I think this is an interesting question because it's about what did you watch early in your anime career that you would, I think, reappreciate more now? And kind of like Wormy, a lot of the shows I watched, what I did see, even as a kid, like I would see Ghost in the Shell or Bebop on like late night as a kid. But I knew like, oh, that wasn't really for me. And I never really got super into them. I just saw them would be like, that's cool. But I didn't like watch the whole series. So I think I watched those when I did. But I guess if I had to choose one show, it would probably be Kill a Kill, which I enjoyed at the time. But I think I watched it so early in my anime days that... I probably miss out on a ton of the in-joke meta references that Trigger is so apt to do with their shows, and I probably would have a much better appreciation if I rewatched it today. But there's really nothing I feel like I need to unwatch and watch for the first time. So, uh, good question, question though. I'm taking this question from a totally different angle. I'm slicing it from a different perspective. Uh, I had a very per- permissive mother, and uh, which means that I saw a lot of shit when I was real young that I shouldn't have seen, and I'm sure it fucked me up in some intangible way that I'm not aware of, but I would, um, if I could go back in time, I would not watch Wicked City when I was like 10. I would not watch Ninja Scroll when I was 10 years old. I wouldn't watch La Blue Girl when I was 13. Um, and I probably wouldn't be allowed to download countless hentai games on my computer up in my bedroom while acquiring a collection of viruses on my PC. That be- poor family PC. <laughs> because it's all- never going to oh, run the same. I talked about it before, but listen, listen to me. Listen, and you know, honestly, do I have a drop for this? Do I have the sad piano drop? I can't find any fucking drops on this soundboard. It's got too many, too too many fucking drops. Oh, here we too go. much porn logging it down. Listen, when you're when you grow up in West Virginia in the '90s, you have like 2.5 kb a second internet. Have you ever waited? Have you ever known the pain of waiting 12 days to download Tokimeki Check-in on your PC? <laughs> only to find out that it has a virus and you can't actually install it. You know how painful that is for a horny 15-year-old? It's like the end of the world, okay? And I feel like I'm traumatized and I may never recover. So, I just wanted, I just wanted that to be known. Um, so yeah, I think I would, um, f- from the normal perspective, I think I would watch like only yesterday probably, like some of these more cerebral like Takahata movies a little later because there's no fucking way a kid can identify anything in only yesterday. It's not for kids. It isn't meant for kids. It's about reminiscing about when you're a kid. And unless you're an adult, you have no concept of what that's about. So, um, that movie was totally wasted on me from younger years. So yeah, that's my answer. We do have another mailbag. Lady Emery favorite of the, on the discord writes, um, let's see here. I'm curious if any of you have ever received fan mail. If so, what was the most uplifting message you've received from your podcast community? And of course, and of course, what was your creepiest? Keep up the great work. Um, for me, I did send, have someone send a case of bacon soda once. That was probably pretty much near the top. Of course, uh, people have sent manga. They've sent Gundam figures pretty recently, which are really cool. Um, a lot of, and a lot of messages, I really think the best messages are the ones where people say, 
that like the podcast got them through a really tough time. I feel like we had somebody who had a really serious illness that got them through that. They said, I really like hearing these, honestly. Um, I feel like that's what it's all about. Like, I don't want to be sappy, but like, I feel like hearing messages like that is more, is more of a reward for doing the podcast than anything else, you know, more than like the subscriptions or, you know, getting an ego boost from being on the, from being on a microphone. It's really nice to hear about that kind of stuff. Cause I mean, you know, helping people is kind of nice and you don't really get opportunities to do that all the time. So I don't know if anybody else has any specific answer to this, Gerald, you might, cause you've been podcasting even longer than I have, but, um, you know, I'll leave it open to you guys now. Anything? Uh, I mean, we, we get some occasional, very nice emails from people and some messages. Um, I mean, one, I remember that's uh, one that was actually told to me was someone was, we were the podcast that they listened to on these extremely long drives, uh, to the only doctor in their state that was helping them with their gender reassignment surgery. And so we were the, v our podcast was long enough that it occupied most of that. And that most was very nice. Yeah. That was a uh, very, very nice to know that we were there for that. Um, it is really weird that now we've got people listening to us who are like, I was like 10 years old listening to your podcast and now <laughs> I'm out of college and have kids. Like, <laughs> now I just want to just turn it to dust. Yeah, we get some of that on the Discord. There's definitely some people who are like, I'm so excited freshman year of high school when we started the Discord and now they're like finishing up college, excited for the real world. And you're just like, has it... <laughs> Really? Been well, that long? <laughs> one of my favorite members on the Discord, and I don't play favorites, but there is someone on the on our Discord that's like 15, or they used to be like 15, and they would message me, and I'm like thinking, you are so ahead of your time. Like, podcasting is really for people that are... Old man's game. <laughs> yeah, people trying to survive their day job, and here's this 15-year-old just crushing it. It's pretty wild. Anyway, thanks for the mailbags, everybody. If you want to leave a mailbag again, it's aaapodcast.com slash mailbag. We have our anime confessionals when you where you reveal your most embarrassing or shameful uh, things that you've done related to anime. We have our hentai... Run Turtle Friend Season 4. Plenty of opportunity God. there, boys. <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever cried at the bottom of a swimming pool because of some girl that, that was never your girlfriend to begin with, that, that would be the place for that. We got our hentai mailbags, the regular mailbags. We got questions about Japan, all sorts of things. Head over there and make it happen. Oh, my God. It's time. We're here. For the anime that gives you titties every five minutes... It's Wicked City. That's the 1987. I don't know if I can call it a classic. I feel like it is, but maybe not. I don't fucking know. Um, anyway, I, I would say it's squarely a classic. I would I give it that this designation. Is, this is absolutely one of the coolest looking anime that's ever been made. Uh, you're and probably every, right. Yeah. Every single, like, uh, if you go back into the 90s and early 2000s, Every single like documentary you ever saw about anime used clips from this. Obviously, not not you know the the dirty clips, but every single one of them used the cool clips of like Renzaburo like shooting a guy and then like falling through a wall and then like the the guy's head falling down and then the eye opening up and everything. And that was the it is one of the coolest looking things ever made. So. Mason, you say you can watch us on Tubi. I don't know what the hell Tubi is. Um, I'll tell you what it is. You I click on that DVD, link right so. in our show notes, which you get if you're a podcast little subscriber. You click that link. It's just going to start playing for you right there in your face. You don't got to pay for it. Nothing. So no excuse to not watch this. All right. All right. Here's my synopsis. I'm not going to read it off my anime list, Mason. I know you hate that. Thank you. Thank you. In Tokyo, a gate between the human and demon world was created, allowing demons to pass into the human world. Um, there's a war of attrition that happens between the demons and the humans, and it's such a terrible war, so many losses on both sides that they uh, make a treaty to agree to peaceful terms. However, the treaty is about to expire, so tensions are ramping up between the demons and the humans. It's escalating. Not all demons want the treaty to be re-signed. Ma uh, Taki and Makie are, are tasked with protecting a mystic, who's a human called Me called Mayart, who is critical to, to, success to successfully re-signing the treaty. Um, that's like the basic synopsis. Uh, I don't want to give away too many spoilers. I'm trying to be spoiler free. Of course, it's a studio Madhouse anime. Madhouse is just like, honest to God, every time I look up an anime and I'm like, this anime was so fucking cool. It's always Madhouse. <laughs> Madhouse is just like, I feel like they carried the 80s like on their shoulders. 
Um, this is based on a novel, which I didn't really know. I didn't know that, but... Um, so going through our normal review format, I'll start with Gerald because he's um, the guest who's never been on the podcast before, at least recently. Um, what were your expectations? I mean, you've already seen this prior to watching Wicked City. Uh, this is pretty well known. This, uh, Wicked City is one of the like OG sort of anime that you would ever see in like a video store back in the 90s. Uh, this was one of the earliest things that was dubbed by Streamline Pictures, one of the first things that was released in theaters. So this is... Uh, the history of this goes back 30 years in America. Um, this is uh, very available. And so I had seen this before. I actually have not seen, did not see this as like early as some people think. Um, but I have seen when? it several times. I saw it in the aughts. In the what? In the uh, aughts. The 2000s. 2000s. Yeah, uh, in the, oh, okay. The, the aughts. The aughts. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, it is. Uh, oh, I don't know how much I should be talking here, but um, yeah, it's for you no, it, however much you want. Yeah, it's uh, watch out. I can talk. Um, so <laughs> it is. Uh, no, I I knew what to expect. It is. Uh, I mean, this is. Uh, I think you would sort of categorize this in America as sort of like a supernatural erotic thriller. Um, yes, the sex is a little bit more common, but I mean, basically, this is like if Basic Instinct had, like, wizards in it or something, or demons. I want to hear from... there's nothing... Go ahead. I would say there's nothing in this that needs to be censored. There's no, there's no like, mosaics in this. It doesn't go that far. But well, there that's because is... there's tentacles. Thank God. But um, <laughs> there is a, a lot, a lot of sex in it. Yeah, so it, it is... Uh, yeah. Are you done? Yep. I'm I I, I will be, for now, be for now. For now. For now. Yeah, yeah. Wormy. Good old yeah. Wormy. I figured this might be right up your alley, Wormy, but what what do you think? What were your expectations? Uh, my expectations going in. Uh I've heard it around for being like infamous and like very gory and like with the scenes and just the aesthetic of it, like being some of the best art you'll see in anime and i was like i'll get to it eventually you know because i don't really watch older stuff i just i don't uh because there's just so much new stuff coming out and i need to go back and watch older stuff but this pretty much met my expectations going into it with like how basically gory and like almost hentai it is so yeah. We'll get to that in a it. second, for sure. Andrew, you hadn't seen this before. No, uh, funny, I have never heard of this movie before. Never I mean, heard of it? Uh, no, uh, honestly, it's just sort of the, one of the things is like when you're the you're the anime quote unquote guy of like your neighborhood or something, you don't really or and there's nobody like, you know, you know, who's older than you or whatever, who like can pass down these like things uh, to you. You just sort of miss out on like uh, some anime culture. Um, I think the most I might have seen it is in that, you know, that old 2000s book uh, or heard of it is with all the anime that existed up to that point that was made back in like 99 or 2000 or something. Uh, that's might be where I may have read the name. But uh, no, I had the only preconception was. Uh, this was chosen for the episode, and then earlier this week you messaged me that this is a straight-up porno, and I laughed, and then I watched it, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I see why you said that now. <laughs> a lot of porn talk coming up. Coming up. Mason, have, had you seen this before, Mason, or was this of your first course. time? Of course. I've seen, I've oh, seen a of ton courses. of Kaujuris. I've seen the Demon Cities. I've seen the Cyber Cities. Oh, I've Demon seen the cities, Wicked cool. Cities. So I... Cool. This one's a little better than Demon Seed. Right? I this. agree. But, Definitely um, better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, this is a little different than normal because oftentimes we come into these reviews watching a show for a review that we haven't seen before. So I'm like, okay, go in. But like this time, I was like, I know exactly what I was getting into. I've seen the sub. I've seen the dub. I've seen the commentary track that goes with it. I've I've enjoyed this, but really, I came into this review and movie just thinking about like. How am I going to talk about an 80 minute long movie that pretty much is fueled purely on the aesthetics that Gerald talked about being so awesome? So fucking and awesome. And the rest of the show or 
OVA movie, whatever you want to call it. We'll talk about the extension of it and extension of other things later. But it's it's a weird thing to talk about. But I was hopeful that we'd get some good info out of it. Um, for me, I've, I had seen this movie several times before this. Um, my so I don't know. I knew exactly. Well, what were my expectations? More titties? I don't fucking know. Um, lots of blues, blacks, and reds. I mean, that's what you get from this show. It's so stylized. One of my favorite things about this anime, and we'll get into it, is that when it's dark, they color everything blue. And I think it's just it's just so emblematic of the '80s. It is so you could literally just say, show this to someone and say, where is this from? Boom. It's from 1987 or whatever. They will know because it's just how things looked back then, and it's my favorite era of anime is this time period. And I don't know. And funnily, and funnily enough, the blue was an accident. It was an uh, accident. It was, it was not meant to look that blue. Uh, uh, we got to ask uh, 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 Kawajiri about it, and um, it was an error in the photo reproduction process. And for several of his movies, the blues were more vibrant than they were supposed to be. Um, if you look at the cells for this and compare them to the final product, um, they they reproduce the blues much more much more so. They cleared it up. They they fixed it by about Ninja Scroll somewhere in the nineties. Yeah, Ninja Scroll was when they fixed it because they they were making these blue. They were blue, but just when they were taking photos that like the film itself made the images more blue than what they had drawn. Yeah. That's crazy. But that's the whole point of like accidents can sometimes be so emblematic and awesome in its own way. But yeah, to be a production mistake is really funny. Yeah. There are, there are almost no decent anime cells of wicked city on eBay. It's so sad. <laughs> I'm such a sucker. I mean, as soon as you said, as soon as you've talked about cells, I was like Googling it immediately. <laughs> well, and unfortunately, the cell market is like terrible now. Like a, a a hand is going to be like this is a six hundred dollar cell now or something crazy. It's it's awful. They've got one of um, got my cells. They've got one of Renza Burrow running up the stairs with a background. It's four hundred twenty five bucks. I mean, I wouldn't pay that for that. But um, did um was it said that the blue colorization is something that something that they like actually revere now, or do they still view it as an error? Because I think it's an amazing stylization and I love it. I mean, I think, I, I guess I wasn't at this, in, but it was an unintentional effect that I'm sure they looked at and probably said, you know, that's still pretty much slapped. I'm good with it, but I want to ask um, a yeah, question. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't think that he has said that he, he has issues with it, but uh, Kawajiri is a guy that really is very particular about like, he wants things his way. It's like there's projects that uh, he has like removed his, uh, his name off of because they didn't come out the way that he wanted. And so I'm, I'm wow. sure that he's a bit like, you know, this was not the look I wanted, but I think he's, he's okay with it. I think. I want to ask a question that we've never asked before on this segment because this is a very unusual review for us do you feel like this is hentai yes or no for me no i no. say no but but fuck me i mean no, it's got it more is... god this is an it's an erotic thriller there's not if nothing has to be censored if you don't see the pink or see the blur <laughs> of the pink or the mosaics the of the pink. pink what about the nips the they're pink, pink then then i don't call it hentai I, this is uh, remember, we are falling into this weird world where, like, Zoomers are saying, like, "Oh, there shouldn't be sex in in shows for adults. Like, there's this this is weird. There shouldn't be sex in these things." And I'm like, "Fuck you! That's what being an adult is." And we also live. I'm going to be doing. I, I have to say this. I'm going to be doing a panel in Otakon soon, and I have I've been doing research for this. I can show these scenes from the Hellboy movie of a person being ripped in half and their organs spilling out in front of a whole group of people. But if some lady shows a titty, I will get shut down immediately. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. This this country is fucked up. This country is supremely fucked up. Well, but let me challenge you real quick because there's a, there's a pretty lengthy and serious like tentacle throat rape scene in this. That would that would fit. That or would give a little past that would, spoilers. It would but... well. It's not really much of a spoiler. I mean, it'll it'll and that which would nestle del very perfectly in a lot of old hentai movies and, and shows. We don't think that the the deep tentacle raping is uh, 
hentai. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I think no, we will I get call this into a the first hentai. To be fair, what um, I think this is a this is a show. Like so, you know, like in porn and whatnot, it's basically a lot of sex scenes interrupted by plot more often than not, right? Uh, this is sort of like the reverse. It's basically it's a lot of plot, and I'm going to use that very loosely. That's interrupted by a lot of like sex scenes for most of the time no reason's sake um but uh that honestly outside of the that one particular scene you were mentioning and that's the only one that i felt like it really got into like hentai territory like definitively uh because everything else just felt like oh yeah they're just like you know having sex you know like you would see in most you know movies uh, yeah, we'll, movies, we'll most movies talk about guy. the purpose of these things for titillation yeah, we'll to or to express a deeper sense of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think I... the lack of titillation, I think something like Game of Thrones, you would argue, yes, there is sex, there is nudity, but it is not hentai. The point of Wicked City is not to stimulate you or to uh, provide that sort of service. It's very much, as Andrew spoke well, it's there is a plot, there is a story, there is a reason to watch it, and there just so happens to the, you're going to catch, catch some strays along the way. All right, so basically, Gerald, on this on this segment, we do our recommendations. So we we basically recommend it or not, but we try to give no spoilers until we get through this this next piece. So would you recommend Wicked City? Yes, I absolutely do. I think this is um, going to be one of the most interesting and stylized anime that you've ever seen. Uh, this sort of animation and look is not done today. Um, it has not been done in a very long time. And it, if, you, if your um, experience with anime is entirely like anime from the past 20 years, this is unlike anything you've ever seen. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else? Me? Nah, yeah. I, I recommend it. All right, we're going to go through the same order. Wormy, we're going in guest order here. Wormy, Ooh, would you recommend okay. Wicked City? For a certain crowd, yes. If like if it's just like an anime fan that watches an anime here and there, definitely not. I would never recommend this. But if they're in the anime community and they've seen, you know, hundreds of anime but they haven't seen this, I'd say yes, go back and watch it just for the stylization of it all and how it looks and because it's like I said, one of the best looking anime I've watched personally, but it's just hard to recommend to like my coworkers who watch like Jujutsu Kaisen. And <laughs> that's it. You think they so, might uh, have they might question your sanity if you were to recommend this to them? Yeah, I mean they already questioned my sanity because I have a tattoo with a tentacle monster on it, so I can't really based. <laughs> but yeah, I'd recommend it to most anime watchers. All right, Andrew, how about you? Um, this is really interesting. I would recommend it for archival purposes, um, but I don't think I would recommend it normally uh, to like a lot of the people. Like, I I can think of very specific friends. I would say if you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh, but for the most part, I don't know if I can go like, yeah, watch this because I don't. It doesn't fall into a lot of sensibilities of a lot of the people that I talk to about anime at the moment but I, I i personally think it's worth a, a watch i'm actually i'm not mad i watched it I, I i have thoughts but i'm not mad i watched this and i think it's 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 it, you know what and this is gonna sound crazy it's like grave of the fireflies in a lot of ways right yeah you should watch it at least once just to like have said you've watched it but i don't think i'm ever gonna revisit it again and they're both you know well animated movies they're both interesting in their own rights and they both deal with very different subject matter but i think it very much is of that kind of ilk it's like yeah it's like you know should i should you watch wicked city i'm like have you seen grave of the fireflies i feel like you should do a double feature you do grave of the fireflies then wicked city then totoro that's that's that, wicked city was missing yes. from that combo back in theaters you're right you're right <laughs> you're onto something mason since you're talking how about you do you recommend this i I think this is a very similar discussion to the around the horn topic of should you have bad plot, good animation or good animation, bad plot. I think if you have listened to this podcast and have heard Mitz go on and on about the 80s, good old days, cells, all that stuff, and you haven't gone back to revisit that to see it, I think Wicked City is one of the better ones to do. Wicked City 
Doomed Megalopolis, Ninja Scroll are all great entries. I think they capture the essence of that era so well and in a really compact format. You're not signing up for a 90 episode slog of something. Like getting it out, like you'll experience that and all the best and worst of 80s anime in this movie. So, yes, I'd recommend it for that. Um, like there's a lot of bad parts about it. So, like, it's not, you know, a refined work of art that is a master class. But I think for what it does, for capturing that nugget of what made that era of anime so special, it succeeds and it's recommendable for that reason alone. For me, I think that this anime has an incredible first five minutes. It is so... To also go back to one of uh, Andrew's Around the Horn questions, if we were to say that this has episodes... The first five minutes of this movie is entrancing. I think they they do such an, an incredible job of setting up the feel of the city in the very beginning of the movie that I don't give a fuck what's in the rest of the movie. I'm gonna watch the whole damn thing because the first five minutes just gets it just gets it it gets its vagina dentata in me so deep that I just can't um, I can't pull away from it. I would just let it take my pee pee. Honestly, that that's how it happens. You can't happens. pull out. You're in I it can't for pull it. out. It's too good. It's it's going down your throat already, and you're just got to swallow. I love, I don't care what anybody says, uh, the director, whoever, I don't care. The blue hues representing darkness, the dichotomy of the blues and reds and blacks in this anime are so fucking cool. I just love every bit of how it looks. Um, I think some of the fights are really interesting. I put a link in the show notes. The scene when Jin comes in and he attacks the, the, the trio, um, there's that scene in the, in the somewhere in the middle of the movie where he he's fighting Taki and whoever the hell Taki's friend is uh, the the hotel owner the, like the butler or whatever and the chess he, wizard and Taki uh, he just or Jin he just screams he's he just screaming at them or whatever and the whole screen turns red and it just starts tearing them apart in the room <laughs> I don't know if it was because I was half asleep or whatever but that scene that that imagery was so intense just watching him just power up basically and just scream at them. And it was like his, the sheer power of his voice ripped off the hotel owner's arm and blew Taki into a wall and knocked him unconscious. Of course, then he goes upstairs and he rapes Makie. But you know, I mean, it's just some of the stuff in this movie is so unusual compared to today. Everybody should, if you can get, if you can get through the first five minutes Listen, people should go back and watch this stuff. This is a different time for anime. You're not, as Gerald said, you're not going to find anything like this today. Nothing. You won't find anything like this in the last 20 years, probably. If you do, it, it's there's, not very common. There's an anime, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have probably, maybe have heard of it, but probably not seen it. It is called Violence Jack Evil Town. I've seen um, part of that on, on okay. Retro Crush. This, the Violence Jack Evil Town is the most horrific, gruesome, morally corrupt anime I've ever seen in my life. Mm. There is stuff that happens in that I've never, it, it is at the level of like the most horrific Italian like giallo movie you've ever seen in your life. It is also something that I think every hardcore anime fan should see once, just once. And that's kind of how I feel about this movie is, is this is something you should experience once. If you mm -hmm. like it, come back to it. But I feel like to to deepen your experience with anime and certainly this era of anime, I feel like it's something you watch once. If it if you attach to it, great. If you don't, fine. That's fine. But it is it is different than anything you you will see today. Yeah, and it's definitely not for everybody. I mean, we'll get into it here in a second, but. Is, is there any anime that is? No. Besides, besides Redline? I mean, I th uh, did you say besides Redline? <laughs> besides, I mean, if you don't like Redline, I think I, I, I've got a gun over here ready for you. Whoa, and... there are Ooh! boobs in Redline too, so uh going to have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> I don't like Redline. You don't like Redline for uh, real? I don't like Redline. Oh, this is worm. where you're disconnecting from the coal. Yeah, that sounds about fair. Goodbye. I don't goodbye. like just like fancy animation if characters didn't feel real to me in that. So yeah. they're not supposed. Hey, this is not a red light characters discussion. Characters are awesome. <laughs> oh, come on, Cherry Boy Hunter. Seems like that Pompadour was too big, and no one could do that. Uh, anyway, red I, I, man, red line. We'll do red line another day. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll do red line. We probably already did that. All right. Anyway, do you guys want to get into spoilers? Yeah. Spoilers are coming. Oh my god. 
All right. Spoilers are coming. Where do you guys want to start? I mean, uh, okay. So actually, I have a I thing I want to say because we've talked a lot about tits, and I love tits. Don't get me wrong, but I and I, I like a lot of the intentionality in this movie, uh, which is I you know like it gets overshadowed by all the boobs and the, the the sex scenes and all that stuff. But there's actually a lot more intentionality and in a lot of the non sex scenes in this movie as well. Uh, I think I want to go to the point where he basically after they go to the hospital. Um, and they get to the hospital and he has to, he goes to, because Mackie has been kidnapped and he goes to save her and he's fighting against this, like these, uh, demon terrorists or whatever. And like, he finally like uses the gun. I feel like for realsies, realsies for the first time. And you actually see the impact that that gun has on him where he's bracing himself against the wall and it still launches him back into the wall, like creating dents. And I think like little things like that actually were really like uh, endeared me to the movie outside of all the the sex scenes, and I thought that was like really cool to see. And I I, I remember like picking out that moment in my head. I'm like, that's a really cool moment um, that I I liked. No, the the physicality of the animation is phenomenal. From the physical destruction of the environments as he's blown back into like the column, like the screaming scene that Mitt said. Or just the, when he's punching through that dude's face, you can feel every bone and, you know, head matter just disintegrate under him. Like, the, the slow motion is used so technically well. Like, the, the animation of all this is phenomenal. And you feel this movie in parts of your body, uh, not down there, you know what I mean, that you don't often <laughs> get with the more lackluster anime of today. Like, it's a visceral watch in a lot of ways. It's super- um, I think I, I feel like um, and I'm not going to excuse this for every sex scene in the movie, but I feel like what they were trying to sort of get across was every sex scene that happens in this movie involves someone from the demon realm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that they're sort of trying to get across that this is how the demon realm works, um, that sex is sort of their their way of punching someone or their way of saying hello almost. Um and certainly a lot of it is uh, is is rough to watch because Makie certainly doesn't have a good time. In fact, I don't think there's a single woman in this that is not either starts off naked or eventually gets naked. Like, so there is soon. the one office worker who you see her face for like... <laughs> for like 10 <laughs> seconds. Two seconds. But every other woman in this movie is a demon. We don't see any other human ladies and all of them, no. like you said... Uh, get something done to them, whether it's on their own volition or not. But it's kind of well, it doesn't give you a good happy feeling. In fairness, there aren't that many non-demon characters, are there? I mean, there's like the hotel owner and Taki and Taki's boss, and that's about it. Yeah, Renzo. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, and Mayart and Mayart. Renzo. Uh, Bur- I mean, that's... no, isn't Mayart a demon? I, I no, that a part human. I was a little confused. He's a, on, he's actually. a human mystic. They call him a mystic. Okay, he's a psychic, basically. He's a pervert, yes. as we call him in modern days. But I, I mean, to each his own. I mean, I always thought, I always thought, whether right or not, that like the 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 stylization of the art and the and all the aggressive content in the movie is just basically trying to paint an image of the city that is infiltrated by demons, and they want to. They're trying to convey, um, essentially, how be. I think the literal Japanese translation of the movie is more beast city. Uh, I think that's supernatural beast city. I mean, yeah. to me, the city itself is a character. They're trying to paint this grungy, violent, infiltrated, uh, you know, no go zone city where like there is just sex and violence and horrible shit happening everywhere. And they want that to be the atmosphere behind the movie. And I feel like they're assimilating that with, with the nature of demons and well, how the I humans play a role in that. I think it's very important to put this movie in context. It came out in 1987, and the book mm-hmm. was written in like 1986 or 85. Um, and this was right at the at the cusp of the bubble economy in Japan. Uh, the first shot that you see of the movie is this very, very famous shot of Shinjuku um, with the buildings. That yeah. shot is used in the opening of Harmageddon. It's used in the opening of Akira. With that, the f- that collection... With the sorry, with, with the, the five or with the five or six skyscrapers coming up through the clouds, is yeah. that what you're referring to? 
That's exactly it, right? That's that is that is a very that is the part of Japan that is always used to show Japan has arrived, and uh, this is that was meant to carry Japan further along. But this sort of this this sort of thing is sort of emblematic of that time. It was a a uh, like if you talk to people who were around in the mid '80s and late '80s, it was a time of excess in Japan, and I think it's very arguable to say that this movie is a lot of excess. Mm-hmm. Well, really, I, I, I think the through line. Sorry, were you going to say something, Fraser? Oh, I, I was going to go back to uh, the point, but I was going to say just quickly. Um, I think to the whole like sex as a currency. I think uh, even as in a funny way, even uh, Giuseppe Mayart alludes to this in one of the conversations they have in the car as well. Um, that it's like you know like sex with a demon is like one of the most wonderful things that you can experience even though blah 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 right but i think they allude to it there as well well really the whole twist of the movie is that maki maki and taki are the bodyguards for giuseppe and it turns out no he's their bodyguard trying to kind of urge them along in their union because their genetic potential makes them a match for each other and that's the contract for the peace treaty between humankind and demon kind. You know, and that really relies worst. on this whole arc of Machia just being tormented more than anyone else throughout this movie through these sexual assaults and her eventually, uh, I guess, kind of shacking up with Taki and, you know, them coming together. And I feel like that love story is really unearned. I feel like that part which is all like added on content because the original ending was supposed to be when they killed the dude in that like dilapidated structure after she was getting raped by three dudes who also had their pants on come on man that's the most monstrous (laughs) thing of the whole anime but anyway that's when it was supposed to end and this whole oh then he takes her out to go clothes shopping at midnight and then they return and then they like that whole like second added on feature i think doesn't work i don't feel their chemistry it just feels like oh she has to fall in love with the guy so she can be the the hero the the character who when giuseppe's mystic might when taki's brawny physical studly force can't take down the bad guy at the end it's her pure virgin energy who's graced with uh, a man's love who can destroy like that whole element of it is really where this movie misses the mark where so much of the first half yeah i think was so good yeah, it's like that element of it. When I looked at my roommate because I watched it with him, and I'm like, they've known each other four hours. What is happening in this movie? Like, I don't understand like this like part of it at all. And then the the clothes shopping, like you said, and it's just I don't know what was like. They did didn't anybody... shop for clothes. They literally. I thought she was walking out of a clothes. broken window. Like she yeah. broke a yeah, window. She and broke a window and just took it. But he's like, "You look nice," because he has the riz oh. and stuff, and always says the perfect one hundred percent thing. And I'm like, the dialogue is just written so bad to me. I'm like, what is happening? Like, I just want to say none of these people are actually attractive. I just want to argue whoa. that. Like, let's talk I... about one second. Taki has the body of a twenty year old. In the dub, he sounds like a thirty year old. Oh, he's a fucking. He has the face of a forty year old and the Japanese voice of a fifty year old. And if you told me he was any of those ages, I would believe him. This man transcends time and space. He's ageless. Him. He's twenty five. Yeah, I posted a picture of him, and I was like, "This guy is twenty five. I would believe he's fifty. I would believe he is fifty. Kids, don't smoke. Yeah. Don't smoke. <laughs> Wicked City is hard on a man. Also, uh, also, I actually will say the dub was quite solid. I think. Especially compared to some of the other dubs of this era, the streamlined dub did a pretty good job across the board. See, this we is to where. Talk to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. This is where it's hard for me to comment on it because I thought the dub was awful. This is like one of the worst dubs I've ever listened to, but I don't watch old stuff, so I'm like, "What the fuck is Go happening?" Go watch the Demon City Shinjuku dub and compare it, and you'll be like, "Whoa, my goodness!" Because the is guy's so this dub, voice this... is so yeah, this monotone. Uses... This dub uses a lot of the cast or the staff that uh, Streamline Pictures used. So mm-hmm. if you watched uh, uh, anything from Streamline, so um, Robotech or um, yeah, anything of that era, that is that staple of actors. Um, I, I really, the thing with that era and Carl Masek was I really liked the actors. I never really liked the scripts. Um, 
the because use the actors generally sound good in other parts. I got to talk to um, the dearly departed Mike Reynolds, who played uh, Maynard in that. Um, we had him on our show, and uh, I was a big fan of his. Um, he always had these like deep, big, growly voices, and he always he commented on that role, and he said that they always ask me to play maniacs. And I, he doesn't know why, but he always played like psychopaths and maniacs. What is that like? He's a bit typecast. Seems like it. Um, he always either plays maniacs or like Santa Claus or something. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, I don't mind that dub, but it is an old-fashioned dub. Um, For sure. Yeah, it is a, a an old-fashioned, old stylized dub. I have no soft spots for Streamline. They um. And, and the way that they did things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I understand that if this is the first time you've heard the stub, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird one. But I also don't watch dubbed anime. <laughs> I don't watch dubbed anime either. It was just the only version available. So I was like, we're watching it. it yeah. yeah. It, it's, like I said, it's old, but I think it gets out of the trap of a lot of modern anime having all the same actors and actresses, which makes everything sound samey. It sounds different. It sounds not as bad as other dubs. I'd still go with the sub always over this, but you know, if you're someone who is doubling, wants nothing uh, obstructing your view of all the goodness on the screen, it's an option. Um, what do we think of the Spider Lady, who was original for this movie? She was not in the original novels. There are not very many vagina dentatas in anime that aren't hentai. Are you implying that there's not enough of them? I'm implying that since I started... <laughs> Well, there's never going to be enough. Is, is the lack of them a problem, Mitz? Or it is this is. just a statement it's a fucking with problem. your opinion? <laughs> I think that it's... So, I honestly think that they are... They're repressed. Like, this is... This is, like... You know, I think that the vagina dentata spider women also have human rights, and they deserve to be in more anime, goddammit. So, which up. is worse? Is is it is it a vagina with teeth? Or like in La Blue Girl, where she can pierce you with her pubic hair, and they're like spikes. <laughs> which, which one is worse? The pubic hair, because I'm not a fan. Yeah, of, probably pubic hair. Pubic yeah. hair. <laughs> For as little, uh, yeah. Um, not a hentai episode, guys. No, well, are you yeah. sure? I, I mean, speaking of uh, speaking of mysterious tunnels, I think I could watch this movie if it was just forty minutes of them driving through those oh, tunnels with like the curved so lights cool. as it wraps. Yeah. I. Oh my goodness, I love that. I want more of that right into my veins. That was the soundtrack just yeah. punching with those punchy, pulsating moments of sound. Oh, it's so good. It They're... gave me those lo-fi vibes as studying. You know, you just got that pulled yeah. up on your second monitor, the yeah. song's playing, and you're just studying. Just, That's, just that, is, that is the thing, is that all of the internet is absolutely obsessed with the aesthetic of the stuff, but they won't fucking watch the stuff. So they, they, want, they want like that gif or that that youtube 10 hour long youtube video but they don't don't want to watch it <laughs> yeah give me a 10 hour clip of hit, uh taki like running when he's being chased by those two yeah. people at like the airport and he's just like oh. on the bottom of the screen oh just give me that i love that i love that so much you know what I it's think is really interesting because it feels like a lot of this could have been solo effort like that that tunnel scene i was looking and i'm like oh great place to like you know reuse a bunch of animation and it's like no it feels like that entire tunnel was just like i probably there are things there just felt like it was entirely animated out and then it transitioned so beautifully into like that city skyline and you go fuck man i wish there was just a little bit less boobs in this <laughs> but the the directing of this was so well foreshadowed we see the tunnel in the opening scene we get the tunnel again in the scene with the spider lady we when the fight with Jin, where the chess master hotel dude throws his uh whatever attached i don't know the weapon sword thing and he catches it in his mouth it's like a prelude to be like look at Jin's mouth focus on that because that's where his power comes from like there's so much foresight in how it frames people's powers and kind of how it connects them in a very way that moves well throughout the screen. And it really isn't something that you think about, but when you really analyze the, the scenes frame by frame, like they connect in such a fluid way that it's just shows a sense of consideration for the craft. And you don't always get that nowadays. It's a lot of shot reverse shot blandness. Let's can, 
Can we talk about what a terrible uh, bodyguard Mayard is? I mean, oh, he, I was gonna say every, that he they locked him in the bathroom and he just left. And I was like, when they brought up, he was supposed to be bodyguarding them. I'm like, he, he left. He this, left. This, show, this movie is an example of everyone being bad at their jobs. Everybody, everybody in this is terrible at, at except not only demons. not not only their stated jobs. But they're actual jobs. Everyone is bad at every at, at everybody's job. And of course, if they were good at their job, there would be no movie. But it is just funny how bad everyone is at their job. Like, I mean, it's... Maynard is supposed to be the, the bodyguard, and then he runs off. It's like, shouldn't you be hanging around them? Well, his claim is, oh, it was all intentional to bring you guys closer together. But in the meantime, you get multiple scenes where they're in crippling danger, and then just this yep. mysterious lightning appears, and they're saved. And that yes. isn't explained until the very end. And it feels, it takes a lot of weight, and it makes those scenes a lot more shallow. And they're like, how did they avoid that? Magic lightning. How did they get out of this? Magic lightning. Oh, it was that dude at the end who takes them to the exact church where the bad guy's waiting in the statue, right, like, feet away from when they're having sex. Like... It just feels very convenient in some of the writing. Yeah. They all might be bad at their jobs, except that parasite that came out of the one girl's nipple. <laughs> because that parasite, that parasite has it has legs, but well, it, it didn't have legs, but it has legs. I mean, it literally came out of her nipple, went into Mayart, he puked it out, then it spent like you know countless hours just raping Machier. I mean, you can say what you want about Mayart, you know, talky, whatever. That fucking parasite. It was not bad at its job. In fact, it was an overachiever. Okay? Employee of the month. I mean, it's got to be one of the most insane visuals of the show, right? Where when it when it's like full grown and it's literally just sticking out of the ground and it's just got her all tangled up. And it and they they have a there's some pretty good images. I wish I could find an anime cell that, but there's none of these online of just like that fucking whatever the hell you want to call it tentacle monster parasite sticking out of the ground with her all tangled up. It's a fucking dope ass visual. I mean, I don't know. I like it. Um, you know what what transpires and, after that. You know your mileage will vary, but yeah, it's it's a very it's it's like the, the so much of this is very cool and very like of a particular crowd as well. I know that this um got very popular with like the punk community back in the nineties, and uh, Tiger Tiger something vinyl released the soundtrack to this I think as it's well. Tiger um, Lab, Tiger Lab, wow. that's it. Thank you. Yes, they put Tiger out some good Lab. stuff. Yes, they released the Legend of the Overfiend soundtrack, which I never thought, like, good lord. Speaking of which, Overfiend came out, like, right around this time as well. This, like, 87 was, like, the year for tentacles. <laughs> the year of the tentacle? I, yeah, well, <laughs> let's have it come around again, isn't it, like, every 20 years? We're due for it. I, yes. I, I will say that one of my favorite things about this movie is just how utterly absurd the, the different scenes are throughout Um Put aside all the art, put aside the story. I'm never going to watch another anime where a dude is being absorbed into a Soapland girl's body. Like, I mean, you're never going to fucking see that again. I Sometimes sometimes I just want to watch something that's batshit nuts. Yeah, and this that's... movie scratches that itch. I mean, it really does. I mean, it's crazy. There's some nuts. nuts Herman, you got to be so glad you watched yeah. this. No, that, that Soapland that. scene, I was like, I'm really into this. And then he starts <laughs> getting absorbed into it. And I'm like, that just reminds me of Berserk. Because there's a Berserk, he gets ab somebody gets absorbed into a girl just like that. So I'm like, yeah. did he take like inspiration from? I saw a lot of stuff that I've seen in Berserk in this. So I'm like, I wonder if he's like watched this and like implemented some elements of that into his art in Berserk. So. I would take a thousand of these over one more season that is like 10 isekais. I'm so goddamn sick and I yeah. want something interesting again. And uh, we, we do like watch alongs and I'm so sick of all the isekai and I'm like, this is, this is in like, it would be cool to have like a one of these a year one of, or one of these every five years. Yeah, just one, right? Just one. Just, yeah, just, just one. Give me oh, one. This is an interesting question when it comes to reviewing old media like this. You know, do you review it from the sense of modern day? Like, oh, a lot of these scenes are probably a little too objectifying and not great for women, you know. But also at the same time, like back in the 80s, they were probably like, oh, I'm sick. Kyle Jury's doing his blue thing again with those harsh red neons. Like, come on, give us something new. Like, we're looking back finally because we are not so inundated with this every day. And, you know, do we give it a good score because it holds up well today? Yeah, I think so. Um, but it's, it's just an interesting reflection on there's so many good classics out there that people are never going to appreciate because it's old 
and it's hard to get them to do it, but yeah. it still holds up. It still looks great. Ha One of the things I personally couldn't get over, and it made me laugh just because I'm not used to this era, the sound design. I'm very big on sound design, and every time they like jumped, I was just it was just funny to me, the like whoosh sounds it would make. And I'm like, I don't like that. It's just just me. But how how do I get how do I get more riding bean? I need it now. Like well, uh, he did do a Kickstarter. He did do a Kickstarter oh. and uh, for that pilot. Well, did it succeed? Because I need to see that. <laughs> it did. I've I've got it. Uh, we'll oh. we'll watch it sometime. It's it's short. Yeah, it's like ten that. minutes. Huh. So I guess one of my, like I think it wouldn't honestly. I think if you you could make a few changes, especially with some of the sex scenes, and I think I would probably have a much more. Uh, like enjoyment of the movie I think it it really like when the sex scene serves the character it feels better it so uh, it's really interesting a lot of the demon women outside of Machie basically use sex as a weapon right mm -hmm. and they are the p people they are in the position of power right the men think that they are the ones running the show but it's the in the first scene the woman is the one who initiates all the sex and she's doing it for ulterior motives in the soap plan she's you know going along with it just to like get something out of the old man um but then it comes to Makie and she starts off as this really you know she comes in she has this cool intro sequence where she like slices up a guy she's like oh yeah I'm definitely gonna be the more powerful more useful person of this two-man duo and then they use every sex scene involving her outside of and I would argue even the last one, basically to put her in a position of weakness. Um, and which just feels so, it's not, and it's not like uh, I'm a tough on the outside, weak on the in, like, you know, tough on the outside, but soft on the inside kind of, you know, where it's like, yeah, it's more like she with like, as the movie goes on, she loses her badassness, which I think is probably where I have some of the issue with the, um, like with the movie more or say, but it's really interesting to see because all of these other women, uh, AKA except for like the office girl. Cause, and even the office girl comes in and she's like a sassy bitch. She's like, yeah, I guess that playboy life really caught up with you. And you know, like every, everyone else basically feels more powerful. And it feels like that this movie is all about stripping away Maki's power to make her, I guess, quote unquote, subservient in some to the grander plan it feels like something something to dash go like uh i don't know it's well, cool I'm it's not, a cool movie yeah i'm, I'm cool. not big on the final revelation of you know her her job was to become a mother because there's nothing more boring than your favorite characters having kids um like that's usually when i check out of anything is like when the character when any characters have kids because screw that um but yeah, it it it's certainly not perfect, and a lot of the sex was added for the rental market. Um, so like, there's there's a lot of sex in the book, um, and they added even more sex to it because um, this was again like an early a rel like the OAVs had been around for like three years at the time, and so um, they they were thinking like, yeah, if we add more sex to it. Maybe it can do like a short run in theaters, and then we'll have a long life in the rental scene. I think I'm ready yeah. to I'm ready to score it. If no one else has anything um, important that they need to say, we're pretty much at time or a little overtime already. So, yeah, um, I think we're ready. Um, who would like to go first? Any volunteers? I don't even Roll know how them dice. works. <laughs> I'll go for I'll go. Uh, we scored out of five. I'll go. Yeah, it goes out of five in point five increments. I, I I'll go first. Um, I really enjoy this movie. I don't remember it having as much sex in it as it had. I haven't. I hadn't seen it since I was like in college, and that's a long fucking time ago. So honestly, I couldn't remember exactly. But I really enjoyed the movie. I don't think it's for everybody. Um, I think that you you got to appreciate the atmosphere of this film. That's its, that's its strongest point to me. I think the best character is the city itself. Um, I really enjoy just how bizarre it is. It's refreshing. It's different. It's something that you don't get today. You're probably never going to see a movie like this again, maybe. Um, and uh, But it's not like a masterpiece. I don't think the narrative is super great. I really I think narratives are important, but I do think that the stylization really shines in this movie, and I would give it um, 
Uh, three solid tentacle rapings out of five. I'll just call on people. How about Mason? Um, yeah, it's funny that you say that char- the, 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 the city was the best character because I wanted to love the city. I loved it at the beginning. I loved it at the end. And it, actually, according to the book, a lot more of these scenes take place in the city, in the heart of Shinjuku, where like this kind of decrepit, uh, evil demon stuff was happening around any corner in any seedy bar. And we kind of got that at the beginning. But then they kind of moved to, you know, you know, a house out in the suburbs, this random dilapidated building. It didn't, it kind of lost the the city and kind of the shadowiness of it. So I wanted a little bit more of that. And yeah, this movie is awesome. It's a vibe. It's just an experience that is something we don't get today. And there's definitely value to it, though. But really, when I look at some of the more crucial plot points that it's relying on staking its plot around and thematic themes, I think is where it falls flat. So as cool as it is, I'm going to give it two and a half windy tunnels out of five. I think uh, just need a little more oomph, but definitely still recommend it despite the middling score let's see uh, how about uh andrew i'll go sounds good um yeah so one of the things i found i really i i did enjoy this more than i guess i thought i would um except for like the end i feel like the end just really feels like yeah we got to kind of end it um i yeah, honestly, I think it's worth the watch just because of just for like the direction and animation alone. And hence, uh, I guess for the first time ever, I'm going to agree with Mason on a review score. Uh, I'm also going to give it 2.5 blasts from um, a revolver um, that shoots you back into a stone wall but doesn't break your back. The boy's thick. He's a He's fucking been eating Chad. His special chicken nuggies. Um, let's see, Gerald. Uh, I really enjoy this one. I will. I will take uh, a an anime featuring adults in modern day in not some goddamn boring Based. ass isekai bullshit Based. that I've, we've seen like a thousand times that we've seen for fifteen fucking years. It doesn't fucking die. I will take adults like this any day. Um, my one issue with this is I don't like the like motherhood revelation at the end. That's just me. I'm not. They they tried that again. They tried that in that um, that other movie from a couple of years ago, and that was sort of bullshit as well. Um, but everything else about this movie, I am fine with. Um, I uh, I am a morally reprehensible person, and so of course <laughs> I like this movie a lot, and so. Um, I recommend this. I feel like if you, if you, I think that this is a really good sort of, um, weeding tool as well. Like if you brought a date home and watched this and she was really into it, you need to propose to her on the spot. That is a, <laughs> and then a fucking call the dime police. piece, baby. <laughs> that Cause is you're about a, to get destroyed. You know that she- is a keeper. And so, um, I, I, for me, this is like a 4.5 um, uh, worm sucked out of a uh, Soapland lady's boobs out of uh, five. Fucking A, yeah. Hell yeah. That's did what you, I like to see. Wormy, did that ever happen to you? Did you ever, did anything come out? She sucked something out of me. It wasn't a worm, but. <laughs> I'm going to need a draw diagram to understand by the, this. By the way, I want an entire like movie around that uh, that Soapland girl. She I loved her design. That, oh, she had oh, the yeah. best hair. design. That's another thing I was going to say. They're like she's the hottest girl at the airport. You'll know who she is. I'm like, "How? Like she wasn't even the hottest girl in the show." What? <laughs> the airport is a sneaky good place for hot chicks. <laughs> There's no doubt about yeah, that. I was like, "She's like she's the least hot girl on the show to me, Makie, but that's I don't know. <laughs> who but, hasn't uh, scored it Wormy, are you last go ahead yeah i'll go last uh so while i really enjoyed the style and overall vibe of the show the characters did not do it for me and i am a character driven guy all my favorite anime from like sound euphonium to show again roku are just character dramas that's just what they are if it, there's no characters or nothing for me to connect to i just do not like a show and the show can be about anything, like all the sex scenes and gore. I loved that stuff. That was the best part of the movie to me. But when I looked into the characters and the story, it just fell flat for me. So I'm going to have to give it two Soapland scenes out of five. 
We got a wide spectrum here. We got some twos, some threes, some fours. Okay. But I feel like the takeaway is even for folks who scored it lower, like it's still a worthwhile experience in 2024 if you have not gone back to the old school anime and are in for something a little more visceral. Like this is, it's just a, it's just a unique experience that it's worth it. It's still Agreed. nothing else is quite like it. And it's just a good time for most people. Listen, the soapbox is anime is modern anime. I don't know. is like 50 years at this point. And there's a lot more than the stuff that came out in the last 10 years. It's good to go back sometimes and experience things that actually laid the foundation for the rest of anime that you and I, that you enjoy today. And it's important to have perspective on where animes come from. So, it's a very important. It's it's weird that animes and you can anime fans can call themselves anime fans and never watch anything old. They've but never seen Akira. A, it's like what if you call yourself a film fan? And you're like, I'm a film fan, but I only watch the newest things that come out. They would laugh you out of the fucking room. So, um, uh, it's, I, it's good to see I, another anime elitist in the room. I love it. I'm not being yes. sarcastic, by the way. I, I <laughs> actually don't have brand myself as that to a lot here. of people. <laughs> yeah, especially because anime. I mean, you know, we're we're done today, really. But anime today is like, like you've said, Gerald. It doesn't have a lot of creativity or variance in what it's about, what it contains. It's a lot of the same. I mean, yes, there are still good isekai shows, but most of them are, nine out of ten of them aren't very good. It's a yeah, lot I still the... watch isekai shows. I like Konosuba. I enjoyed that show. I think Jobless so... Reincarnation is good, but, you know, there's a lot for yeah. everyone. For every one of those, I there's just, ten that are bad, just, you know. I just so. don't need eight or ten of them every season. Yeah, exactly. Wait, wait, guys. What if Taki and Makie were both vending machines. Uh, uh, not too bad an idea, right? Why Sequel. would you, I think you ruin a million dollar I idea love. there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's oh, wrap, let's wrap it up it. here. We could go a lot longer, I'm sure, but I, I want to thank Gerald for coming on. So that was nice thank to see you. you again, Gerald. Um, I will be closer to Florida soon, but still not in Florida. So, but, uh, I'm, I'm, it was good to know that you're doing well, at least. Um, if again, you're going to Udacon, go to his panel. Yes, he knows please. He's a cool dude. That's true. Otakon is a dope ass time, and you get to hang out. We get to see Gerald do his panel. I would recommend that strongly. So definitely do that. You know, a big thanks to Wormy and Andrew for coming on, who aren't usual hosts, but um, you guys are good. You guys offered some good content, and I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks, Andrew, for coming I on again. I just want to say, mm -hmm. I think Gerald uh, conned us. <laughs> I think he conned us in the game. I'm just going to say, I think he conned us in the game. Uh, you, you didn't win, but you did hmm. really well, which is, I think he conned and us. I, anyway, and, it was fun. I, it was fun. <laughs> and, and I had my speech all laid out too. I was getting ready. Oh no. Oh, I feel bad. I, I was trying to ham it in so you could take the victory lap. We, <laughs> and we, I, both, and, we both lost. <laughs> and I, and I self-sacrificed, so yeah. So again, guys, thanks for listening. You need to check out uh, check out Gerald over at Anime World Order Archive. Um, Gerald, what else were you promoting? You had an, you had something on Archive. Uh, Anime World Order. I am working on the Otaku Archive, so I'm trying to put the word out for this. If you have old anime fanzines or old magazines or feel like you can contribute in some way, contact me on Twitter. Oh, not on Twitter. Screw Twitter. Uh, I'm there, but contact me on Blue Sky instead. Um, at Gerald at underscore AWO. Um, we're trying to preserve anime fandoms past before all those people die because they're starting to die. Um, and uh, please come to my panel at Otakon too. Listen to what the man said. You can follow us on social. I've already gone through it. You guys know where it is. AAADiscord.com. Of course, you want to come hang out, hang out and check out the Discord. That's about it, guys. Thanks. Thank you to Mason. Thanks, Mason, for coming on. Thanks for uh, for finally winning around the horn on the third go or the fourth go, whatever this is. Andrew, Gerald, Wormy, thanks for being on the podcast. We'll see you guys next time. For all of you listening at home, I appreciate you. For everybody on Twitch, have a good night. We'll see you guys. Take care. Peace. Bye.